Hey everyone and welcome to another Crimson Scales class video, this one on the Quattral Bombard. If you don't know what the Crimson Scales is, it is a expansion, community made expansion to the physical board game version of Gloomhaven. It does require some of the components from the physical game, the original game, but it does come with a new campaign and a load of new characters. And if you are lucky enough to get into the kind of printed version, then good for you but there is also a print and play version and there is also a tabletop simulator mod if you'd like to check it out for free over there just go to the crimsonscales.com and you can get all of the information about it there a quick thank you to everybody over on patreon who supports the channel and people over on twitch i really appreciate it thank you so much and to mike for the legendary support that's really kind of you dude if you would like to catch an episode of this live come over to twitch.tv slash manager quest every monday wednesday and sunday wednesday is at the moment the day that i do crimson scale streams. so if you'd like to come and hang out over there and maybe catch an episode of this life. All right, let's get in to the bombard. Where most quattrals excel at engineering and inventing, only few have the skills to master the art of operating their most advanced weaponry. The pinnacle of quattral weaponry, the bombard unit, is a machine like none other, built to be operated by the most skilled quattrals themselves, whether they're posted in prestigious military positions or using the mechanical innovation for personal gain. Bombards are the unstoppable force on the battlefield that can tear down the strongest defenses without hesitation. So, it's a pretty mean looking guy. He's got his like, mask on and everything. And it looks pretty tough. Looks kind of scary compared to like your usual qu happy go lucky quattro that you see. Looks pretty serious, this guy. Okay, so let's look at the, uh, the actual um, card itself. So this is the the player mat, the front of the player mat. So usually, if you if you're used to like base, you know, regular Gloomhaven, this just has like the turn order and what short rest and long rest does and that kind of stuff on it, that kind of information. But going forward, um, this will include lots more stuff about the mechanics of the characters, and that's true in Frosthaven as well, which I think is a better use of the space for sure. So the bombard, we have nine cards, so um not the lowest but it it's probably or it is on the lower end that's the lower end of characters in general so that does mean that burning cards might be a bit tricky for us or at least we've got to think about it depending on the mechanics and things but yeah so a smaller hand size um projectiles so this will be like our first mechanic the bombard has a unique action type called projectile which marks a hex within the specific range of the ability with a character token. If a projectile lists multiple targets, mark one hex for each target. At the start of your next turn, perform the ability listed for the projectile targeting the marked hexes. If no enemy occupies the marked hex at the start of your turn, the ability has no effect. The character token is removed in both cases after performing the projectile ability. Remove the card from your active area and play your selected cards for the turn. Okay. Um, at the start of your next turn, perform the ability. Oh, I see. So it's almost like you're kind of like... Um, yeah, it's like you're just marking a hex to be like, I'm going to blow that up next turn. Kind of like... and. If you can obviously get an enemy to walk into it or something like that, then that's um, that's going to have some kind of effect. So that's pretty cool. Quite good for like zoning enemies. I imagine like push and pull might play quite well with this character then. Um, example, um, attack three was the kind of projectile that we had up. Enemy moves into the, the space. Enemy moves into the mark hex and occupies that hex. Next turn, attack is performed. Attack three. Cool. Example B. Um, attack three projectile xx enemy moves onto hex inside of the attack area but does not occupy the marked hex next turn ability has no effect oh interesting okay that feels like that's going to be very relevant to some cards a delayed attack you set up yeah you like the planning projectile needs but for a powerful reward yeah it's kind of cool i imagine it works really well with with any kind of character who can push, pull, or like mind control enemies in some way to get them into certain hexes. That feels really good. It'll also be pretty important to have, I would imagine, we'll get into the card soon, but I would imagine it'd be pretty important to have a good late and also early initiative because you'd either want to go early to try and set it up um, 
or late maybe. But then saying that it only happens on your next turn. So maybe that doesn't matter so much. Maybe I'm reading too much into that right now. But it'd be interesting to see what the initiatives are like. Because it's not like it doesn't trigger when the enemy walks in, like say a trap. It's more like if there's an enemy there on your next turn, you'll get to do it. So it's not like a trap or anything like that, that maybe you would want to go super early. Um, so we'll see. It'll be interesting to see. How does it work with Retaliate? Um, well, it's like you perform a regular attack. I, am, I presume that pretty much all of our attacks are ranged. So unless the enemy has some kind of ranged Retaliate, I, I don't see it be a problem. So if you guess like Flame Demons, it would still trigger because you're just performing an attack, I would assume. So like Retaliate could still trigger if the other conditions were met, I would think, right? <clears throat> mm -mm. Projectile attacks are above average power. Late than early works well. Okay. Well, we'll see. Um, Health-wise, uh, 10 health. That's actually pretty decent. You know, for a starting character that might be a bit more of a ranged character by just going off of, like, this mechanic feels kind of ranged and the way this looks. I mean, maybe not. This looks like it's pretty spiky. Maybe we have some cool, like, AoEs and stuff. But, you know, this generally would make me feel like it might be a bit of a ranged character. And that's a decent amount of health for a ranged character, for sure. So, we're not like a complete glass cannon, maybe. <laughs> like, actually a glass cannon. Um, okay, let's go to the cards, shall we? So, first card, level one. Consistent firing. Projectile, range three. At the start of your next turn, perform an attack one. Attack one, pierce one. Attack 1, PS2. 1 XP. And that's uh, that's permanent. So that, like that's like the projectile cards are all going to go into your active area. Sort of to remind you that that's the projectile that you have up. Right? <clears throat> Think of him like a real life tank. That's him ranged but thick. Yeah. <laughs> he's got armor. He's got armor but he's a ranged guy. <clears throat> So, this is like a little bit of a strange templating, but I guess this is just an attack one, then another attack one with pierce one, then an attack one with pierce two. Like, that's how I would read that. It's three separate attacks, and they've just basically had to, they've had to template it in this way because there's a lot of text on this card, right? So, this is just three attacks, one being attack one, attack one, pierce one, attack one, pierce two. And that would be on a on a target that is range three away. And that's quite good, you know? Attack one is obviously not very good, like, level one. Level one, it's going to feel a little bit like, uh, you know, with a, with a basic attack modifier deck, I hate attacking for one. It's just like, oh. It's just like, you know you're probably not going to do any damage. Um... But perhaps we have ways to improve that attack one. Perhaps we have a really good perk deck, which we'll get into. We'll probably look at perks like after we do level one and X cards. Then we can look at perks. So it gives us a bit of a better idea how we build out maybe. But the PS1 and the PS2 keeps this kind of relevant, which is the good thing. Like as, as enemies, um, as you level up and enemies get stronger and they generally tend to get shield added, this will then still be relevant and... I think we've discussed this before that Crimson Scales in particular has done a really good job of um, of using Pierce in a much more efficient way um, to keep level one cards still relevant, but making them still feel like level one cards, like when you get them at level one, because this just feels like a level one card because like having Pierce two is, yeah, I mean, you might come across one difficult enemy that the Pierce two would be good against, but it's probably not going to be like super amazing at level one but certainly once the levels start to go up and the scenario level goes up you know a lot of enemies just have like a shield so it keeps the card nice and relevant <clears throat> <clears throat> you think it's not great bad against shields even though it has pierce but with poison great especially with my foot um i mean yeah obviously with poison it's going to be fantastic because you're going to get an extra bonus on each of the attacks I, like, level one, it's not great, but it's certainly not terrible. Like, if there's some way that we can buff this in some way, like, I'm assuming we might have some kind of, like, you know, auras or buffs that we can play. I'm just, you know, 
going to go out on a limb here that that might be something that we can do. So, yes, it's not, like, incredible, of course, but I, I think it's playable. It's playable as it is, you know? <clears throat> Once you mark a hex, you can attack it any range. Just line of sight required. Um, that's a really good question, actually. Did it say anything about that in there? Uh, the starting next to performing being listed, targeting the marked hexes. It says targeting. Which I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess not. So it, that's an interesting thought though. Like, could you mark a hex and then run away? <clears throat> yes. Okay. So there's no line of sight. Interesting. I mean, that, that could actually be like quite a nice little, um, kind of a little way of like flipping the whole dynamic of a ranged character. And it would kind of make sense because if you've got like artillery, right? If the idea of projectiles is to be like an artillery strike, you don't really need line of sight for an artillery strike. You just kind of fire your cannon up, right? And it just drops on the drops on the spot, you know? You don't need line of sight for artillery strikes. So yeah, thematically, it wouldn't matter if you had line of sight or not. If that's the intent, right? It does say the specified range is for marking the hex, not the attack itself. Yes. Yeah. You think you need line of sight? Hmm. You need line of sight. Maybe that's to stop it from being broken. You seem to say, so you think of it like you launched a big missile or bomb on your turn and it just lands next turn. Hmm. Yeah. Hangs in the air. You think you need us out, but you don't know. You might be wrong. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, the way that I would, like, thematically interpret it would be that you kind of don't. But I could see that maybe from, like, a gameplay perspective, that could be quite strong. So maybe that's not how it operates. I don't know. I think it's a really interesting question. It doesn't, like, for example, there's no... There's nothing here that, like, says, like... Do you know what I mean? Like, the examples that they've used here are very basic. Um, and it doesn't really imply anywhere here that, you know, as far as it the ability listed for the projectile, targeting the marked hex, if you have line of sight, would be a really easy line of text to add there. <laughs> There's plenty of space for them to elaborate on having line of sight or still within range or whatever they wanted to stipulate here. There's loads of space for that if they wanted to write another little, and they didn't. So, you know, I would rather interpret the fact there is no rule that, you know, it, you don't have to, rather than be like, oh, you probably do. Like, you know what I mean? I'd rather go with the fact that there is no rule saying you can't, so you probably can. <clears throat> you do need line of sight, though, and they are range. You think it got added to the FAQ. Okay. All right, well, fair enough. I mean, I think that's fair. Like, it's it would have been interesting, though, if you didn't have to. <laughs> What if the monster moves? You lose the attack? Uh, yes, because basically the hex has to be occupied at the beginning of your turn. So as long as the hex is occupied at the beginning of your turn and you have this in your active area or projectile, then it kind of happens. If if there is no enemy in that hex and it's your turn, then this kind of gets discarded and just nothing happens. Um, okay, so 76 initiative. Like we said, the initiative is going to be really interesting on this character, so we'll keep track of it. But this is like, you know, a, a fairly decent late-ish initiative. Um, move two, gain advantage on your next attack. That's pretty cool. And then... So this... So you keep this out. Okay, so you keep this out until you use it to get the advantage. Okay. I don't know why it just seems a bit that seems I don't know if it's me but that just seems worded slightly weirdly but I, maybe I'm just having a moment I don't know just feels a little bit odd gain advantage on your next attack great and I guess it would have to be this but I'm interested as to why it's a charge why is it a charge why could it not have just been this and one xp symbol am I missing something
You don't get the permanent icon on this card if the token is removed after next turn. Oh, you mean this? Sure. It could not be round. Yes, so in terms of this, I believe... I believe there's only two versions of this symbol, right? Which is this infinity one, which is like forever. Then you have like the round-based effect one. I don't think you have a turn-based symbol. So in a way, they would, if they wanted to, uh, you'd, they'd have to invent another symbol for this to, in, to mean like turn, I guess. And so they figured that, well, let's just put infinity on it because like you'll understand how it works. Like, because it does stipulate here at the start of your next turn. So, like, it's quite... They've worded it quite well. I agree it's a little bit confusing, but I think it's probably just because they would then have to invent another symbol, which would only be usable maybe here, and it would just get confusing. They've specified it very clearly here, so I think that's fine. <clears throat> is it mentioned on the map that projectors are discarded at the start of next turn? Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and potentially, if it... I don't know if... If this kind of wordage goes away, it could be that when, you know, you get more complicated ones and perhaps they they start to take this away. Because that's the kind of thing that, like, is quite common in trying to teach a rule, right? If you've got the space, write the full text out. But as you progress on, just remove this text because people are going to understand what projectile means. But, yeah, for the first few cards, you know, just maybe write that line of text. Makes it very clear. Good old template talks. Classic stream start. Yeah, pretty much. So anyway, I, I like I'm I'm fine with that for this one. This one though, I do find a little bit confusing. I just just because I don't see why it's a charge when it just says gain advantage on your next attack and it's infinity anyway. Like I'm just a bit confused as to why there's a charge there. It could just be gain advantage on your next attack with this symbol and one XP. I guess because they don't want you to get the XP for not using the advantage. That's the only reason for doing it, right? Like, it's because if you never use the advantage, you would never get the XP. You need a charge to indicate it goes away afterwards. Yeah, okay, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think otherwise you'd have to like put another line of text here to say discarded or something. Yeah, okay. I, I see what you mean. People could people could interpret this as just like a permanent thing. I mean, I, I don't know. I didn't read it that way, but sure. I could see how if without this, someone could interpret this as like all of my next attacks have advantage now. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, next card. Double cannons. Attack three, range two. Nice little double... Well, two hexes next to each other. I mean, that's that's pretty much... Well, that is as simple as you're ever going to get. That's an AoE pattern in Gloomhaven, right? Two hexes next to each other. I'm sure we can manage that. That's fine. Um, Easy. No problem. Very good value attack. I Means six damage on a level one card. Range 2 is the uh, a little bit annoying thing. I know it says an enhancement dot here. Might maybe a good candidate to get a, a range enhancement there. Because might be slightly tricky to get it. Especially if they're like behind each other. So if they're like in a line and you're in front of them. The range 2 is going to be... Well actually no it doesn't because you just rotate the hex. Yeah so it'll be fine. Actually no it's fine because you just rotate the hex. Yeah this, this is good. <clears throat> range skewer baby. Yeah. You're a tank. You're scared of getting close. A literal tank. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's good. This is very strong. Six damage on a level one card. Like, kind of no questions asked. Very good. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, it can be hitting something. Yeah, it's because the way you rotate it, it should be fine. But they, I guess there could be a few situations where the range two might slightly hurt the card, but... 
It's it's hardly a drawback, really. It's hardly a drawback. Good good candidate for a cheap plus one range enhancement for sure. When I say cheap, it won't be too cheap because of this, but it'll be probably pretty good value. Um, 60 initiative, again, kind of, uh, this is like edging on bad initiative, you know. I don't like anything from like 40 to 60. It's like the, uh, don't really like it because I don't think I would ever use it as a leading initiative. Anything that's 40 to 60, I would never be using as, as a leading initiative, so... Um, shield to self, definitely bad with this initiative. Uh, this shield only applies to ranged attacks. Ooh. That's a good amount of shield. Only applies to ranged attacks. The awkward thing about ranged attacks is they're the ones that usually have pierce. <laughs> if you're against, like, archers, right? Um... I don't know if I'd be playing the bottom of this. I mean, the top of this seems really good. So, I mean, it's not... It's not bad. It's pretty good, to be honest. But in certain scenarios, it won't do anything. But then does that really matter? Because you've got such a reusable top action. It's good to have, like, something that's maybe a little bit kind of weird, but situationally good on the bottom half. Because then you can just sort of switch things up if you wanted to. The only bad thing is the initiative just absolutely sucks. So you'd need to find a good card to pair with this. Ba -ba -bam. <clears throat> it should have innate shield four. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Sounds like a top card to me. Yeah, it does to me too. But I, I mean, I, I like the kind of, you know, you got the big damage, you got the big shield. You know, that's a good multi-purpose kind of card, right? I think that's a good use of it. This bottom is already situational in your experience on the Banner Spear card with like 15 initiative. Hmm. I guess it will depend on the scenarios maybe a little bit as well in Crimson Scales. If most people will be playing this character in Crimson Scales, that's also to be considered. Um, I don't know how, what the, you know, you don't know what the kind of balance is going to be. So, yeah, I mean, this is obviously a very solid card. Absolute role player. And it's a card that you're going to play for the top probably every time in a scenario apart from the odd once or twice. And it's probably not a card as well that you're going to be burning to short or long rests, I would presume, because of just the way it's the way it's just great value attack. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Exploding cannonball. Another projectile. So our second projectile. Range four, at the start of your next turn, perform attack three, pierce one. Okay. Right. So these ones, like, these ones, I think, are, are like the confusing ones for this mechanic. But it's a, it's a cool idea. <laughs> it's a lot of damage. <laughs> Pretty crazy. No, that's a lot of damage. Thanks, Phil. It really is. So they're like, these are the ones that are kind of probably going to trip people up the most. So it's a ranged attack. Here's where your kind of your target is, if you like. In order for you to perform this attack, there must be somebody in this hex, right? There must be an enemy in this hex. You know, you could have an enemy here, 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 and here. If there's no enemy in this hex, this attack doesn't happen. And I feel like that's where, like, this kind of thing is going to maybe, like, trip people up somewhat. So, you need somebody there, and then you basically orientate, you know, from that point. So, anything upside is going to get get attacked. Um, but attack three, pierce one, burn. I mean, net shooter was very playable. Ink bomb was very playable. Um, fire orbs, very playable. Impaling eruption, very playable. This could be better than those <laughs> so probably pretty playable range four as well means uh i mean put it wherever right mm -mm -mm. time for a nuke yeah mm -mm -mm -mm. this character will work well with a chain guard i haven't seen the chain guard yet i think that's on the list of characters to review does it make the element on the attack or when the card is played 
I would say when the card is played. Because the element otherwise would be down here. Like it would be here. If it was on the attack. Like the big one? Yeah, this is like a, the big one, right? Love it. Yeah, really cool attack. Very, um, very powerful. Like we said again with the PS1, just a way to kind of make it just a little bit like a little bit better. It's like half a point of damage. PS1's like half a point of damage. You know, some scenarios isn't going to matter. Other scenarios is going to keep the card relevant. So, you know, it's it's good. Um, two XP, a burn. I mean, this could not, not be a burn. Yeah, I mean, a great attack. You only have nine cards, this character, though. So, you know, the burns that you pick are going to have to be really good. And they're probably going to have to have a good bottom action too. So, you know, whether or not this card... You know, this is amazing. Let's hope we have something pretty good here too. 88 Initiative is... Um, I think 88 Initiative is fine for this kind of thing. Like, you know, I feel like you're going to be setting stuff up, right? Ideally, you actually probably want to go late. Pick a really nice spot. And then go super early the next turn to ensure this gets off maybe. So, I think this is actually a pretty good initiative for this effect. Go late. Pick your spot. Hopefully, when they're all in the right place... Go really early the next turn to get the um the attack off nice and quick, right? <clears throat> Don't play this against wind demons that can go on two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, move three. This movement is unaffected by difficult and hazardous terrain. Good. It is a that is a I mean I'd say like you know, a move four would be would also be pretty nice, but a uh, move three just difficult and hazardous terrain ignore them I mean that's that's just solid so a very very solid card I mean characters need to move in the game and every character is going to have to probably use a card that's something like a move three a move four a move five like you're going to have one or two cards in your hand and really all you use them for is movement and this is going to be a pretty good one and like I think somebody said earlier, like with the Maya Foot, this, this character has some great synergy with the Maya Foot now too, because you're not going to be messed up by all of the Maya Foot stuff that's going on. So that's, that's good. Don't want to be, don't want to be getting yourself stuck on terrain, especially if you're maybe a character that doesn't move a huge amount. Like you've got like maybe you're a bit, a bit more limited in your movement in some ways. You really don't want to get stuck on a scenario that has just like annoying terrain to deal with. I like this card chat. I think this is very good. Definitely a standout card so far. I mean, I think this is obviously very good too, but yeah. Exciting, exciting burn, big damage card. I'm always up for that. So chuck a couple of items into this as well, like power potions and what have you. We like it. <clears throat> Forceful Bolt. Attack 3, range 2, push 2. So, interesting. So we have some push inbuilt here. So like I always say, like the baseline for any kind of like level 1 ranged attack is usually like attack 3, range 3. And then you kind of go up or down from there, depending on if it has like stun or if it has poison or if it has wound or whatever you you kind of like play with the numbers but like the most boring card would be but probably the most fair card would be attack three range three so a little bit less range but the push two if you were to play this maybe late no you wouldn't want to play it late how would you actually it takes up a top action so it might make it things a bit difficult to get your um triggers off right yeah actually you kind of want them on the bottom don't you rather than the top this kind of effect on the bottom would be really good. Because then you could do a projectile and then push something in to where it was and do that maybe late. Interesting. I mean, it's still, it's very good. I mean, you, I think every party needs a little bit of push or pull in it. Because traps are such a, a such an like a good way to deal with enemies, like just difficult enemies. And so a good party should have some kind of access to forced movement in some way, in my opinion. So it's, this is a very good, very good reasonable ability to use. I'm still trying to figure out the best tempo to make it work for us, though, with projectile. It's kind of thematic how it's up and close and then pushes hard. Forceful bolt after all. Yeah, 
I mean, you'd definitely be pushed away if you got like a cannonball to the chest at close range, for sure. This guy would really have helped with that scenario in Jaws yesterday. Kicking those tables that don't move and getting through the difficult terrain easily. Yeah, that's true. You could just like keep targeting the tables, couldn't you? That's a good point. Might also be decent, decent at CCing slow enemies, yeah? Anything that doesn't like move or moves very little. You know, like living corpses, stuff like that. A newt newt. Hey, Kira. You're expecting Jaws the Lion? No, we're back on Crimson Scales, baby. <clears throat> Realistically, you could be instantly dead. If you took a cannibal to the chest? Yeah, but, you know. We can't have that. I mean, unless there is a card that does that. I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. But I, pretty unlikely, I think. So, yeah, decent attack. I don't, like, the. I guess the, the, the weird thing is, is that unless maybe we get projectiles on the bottom, that would be kind of cool. I guess we'll see. At the moment, we've only seen two and they've both been on the top. So, makes it a little bit awkward. But it's a very usable attack, for sure. Um, 63 initiative is, yeah. Not, not good. To be honest, I've only seen one initiative that I'm really that happy about at the moment, which is that. So... Everything else has been very meh so far. Loot one, move one. Well, that's kind of in the wrong order. That's sort of in the wrong order, but... I mean, at least it does something. Hmm. Yeah, this card's very average, isn't it? Very average. Not bad. And for level one, you're probably going to be taking it, but... Well, we'll see what the other cards are like. But this card feels very average to me. Very, very average. It's a bit stanky, the bomb. Yeah, I mean, you kind of want them the other way around to at least give you the potential to maybe, like, add a pair of boots on top and, and get a decent loot action in maybe once or twice. But looting around you is pretty unlikely. I don't know. Maybe there'll be a couple of other cards that might actually work quite well in this favor. I don't know. Hmm... Just picked your son to join. This is his favorite. I'm one he's playing in our game. Nice. Yeah, I feel like this card's just, just the definition of like a average card. <laughs> so probably makes the card at level one because it's not bad, but probably be a card that you'd be looking to replace. Um, Grappling hook. Attack two, range four. Pull three. What? Pull three, self. Towards the enemy. Oh, because it's a grappling hook. So you're, you're push, pulling yourself towards them. Pull three self towards the enemy targeted with the attack ability. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. That's a very unique ability. This kind of like reminds me of like... Um, this kind of like reminds me of like... Uh, like shooting games, like first person shooting type games, you know, where you get like grappling hooks and you kind of like grab onto the enemy and you use it to kind of like speed through the level. Like it feels like, a, it feels like a cheaty way to get like free movement. <laughs> you know, you're like, it's kind of like latch onto an enemy, go pull yourself towards them. It's kind of cool. Can you pull if the enemy was killed by the attack? No. Uh, no. No, well, maybe, actually, maybe, yes. I don't know, because there is a line underneath this. It's attack two, range four, then there's a line, and then it says pull three towards the enemy target. But if the enemy is dead, there is no enemy there. So potentially, that's a good question. And it's separated by a line, which usually indicates that it's, like, completely separate. That's kind of funky. I think Spotify has died again. I'll tell you what, I'm really fed up with Spotify at the moment. It does not work properly. Um, need an enemy to target, so if it's dead, no target. Yeah, that would be the way that I would interpret it, for sure. But it is interesting that the way that it's kind of like... Like, this is almost not part of the attack ability. But that's probably so that they could kind of write this stuff in here and it makes more sense. Dead weight, dead body has a weight to pull yourself to the corpse. That's fair. Unfortunately, in Gloomhaven, like most enemy enemies, when they die, just kind of like 
puff into smoke and dis disappear. But yeah, I mean, like, thematically, you could still, like, you know, anchor onto a dead body. I guess it would be uh, that hard. Pull in and tank. Yeah, I guess you could use grappling hook and then you could, in theory, use the bottom of this, right? I mean, that's... In a, in a particular situation, it might be okay, but look at this terrible initiative, though. Oof. I really hope we come across, like, something that's, like, 10 initiative that's got, like, some sort of shielding ability on the bottom of it. That would be cool. Should put an attack two on the end of the pull, so it's like you're grappling to punch them in the face. That would be a, quite a cool idea. Or you could, like, make it, like, attack one, range four, pull three, then do, like, an attack two melee or something, right? Or an attack one melee. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, attack one, range one. No, sorry, range four. Then you do this ability. Then you do an attack one melee. <laughs> so you kind of like... Because they, they got to take a little bit of damage because they've just been hit by a grappling hook. And then you kind of pull yourself in. And then you do the punch. I think that's cool. Poof into coins. Then pull self to the coins. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would, funnily enough, if this actually worked, like, if it actually worked if the enemy was dead, then suddenly this gets uh, quite a lot better, right? Because then you can pull yourself to them. You could do a little loot, pick up the, the loot around you, possibly. You know, if you time it in a, in a fun way, would actually make this bottom ability kind of more fun. But, I mean, I think it, ha it has to work the way it does. So, um, 68 initiative, move three jump. Very, very playable. Anything with, you know, the word jump on it is probably going to be playable. Um, just because it's going it, to, it's just going to give you so much freedom to move around the battlefield, get over traps and, you know, scenarios have a tendency to put traps between you and enemies and, uh, or, the, or between you and doors or, you know, difficult terrain, hazardous terrain, whatever it is. I know that we've already got one move that does ignore that, but this would not ignore traps so now you got something that could help you maybe get over those traps <clears throat> mm -mm. there are some nice early initiatives coming up the drop a crosshairs late and then go early strap works nice that's what we were kind of like with something like this i thought that was a really cool idea 88 initiative to do this and then go really early in the next turn all right, so like Grappling Hook, I think I, I really like thematically where this card's at. I think it's really quite cool, actually. Really is quite cool. If we can have some really fun bottom abilities to interact with this, which hopefully we will coming up, that would be really good. But we, we need to find something. I like the idea of us going right into an enemy's face and then having some really cool bottom ability that combos well with this. So we'll keep an eye, we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, ignited Launch. Projectile, range four. <laughs> no, that's, that's a, a lot, lot of damage. damage. It is quite a lot of damage. Attack five? Hmm. Attack five at range four. Fire, one XP. You can play it again. You can play this as uh This is not a burn. This is an attack five at level one, folks. Granted, you know, it has, the enemy has to kind of find their way to that hex, but I feel like that would be that hard. This is so good. An attack five range four at level one is kind of insane. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I think, I don't know, like one thing that I feel like this character may suffer from a little bit. And I've found this a lot sometimes when I've been playing like normal difficulty. If you're playing with two other classes that are really fast and big damage dealers on their turn, would it ever like sometimes get a little bit annoying that you're like, oh, but my projectile was going to kill that. And they're like, no, like I'll just go in and kill it and get the XP, you know? Because you, you're kind of like you're you're a damage dealer, but you're you're delayed. So like if your buddies are going after them and like just hitting them for like, you know, threes and fours, drawing times twos, strength and attacks and stuff. I don't know. It'd be interesting to play it, see how that kind of, because it's a, it's a different tempo to other characters on the board. And I often, you know, it's kind of annoying when you like, 
It's like if you if you want to try and loot and there's a scoundrel player on your team, it's like you may as well just kiss that loot goodbye. Like when are you, they're just gonna go earlier than you. <laughs> they're gonna get to the chest. They're gonna get to these things. You know, like so like the tempo of the game doesn't really play into your into you to be able to kind of do that. And so I wonder like how many times like it happens that you kind of do a projectile and then like oh well the enemies died. Like okay, you know. Guess you have to go slow then fast. Yeah, but I, how, I guess we'll find out in a minute how fast we can go. I can see a 14 and a 13 coming up, so. Doing this, then early next round, the range skewer can lead to some spicy burst. Oh, yeah. That would actually be pretty sweet. It's a very, very strong attack, though. Absolutely. I mean, it's... It is, it is better than... It's better than double, double cannons, just because it's easier to land, right? And the range four is a lot of range. This means you could... Also, I guess if you're against like an enemy who... Like an archer or an artillery. Like if you're against ancient artillery. They're not moving. So a lot of the time they're just going to stay where they are. So you can be pretty... It's pretty reliable that you can hit this. You're not kind of hoping that somebody moves into there. It's like, no, that enemy is probably never going to move off that spot. Unless another player forces them off that spot. Right? <clears throat> Great point. Your party of Doomstalker, Lightning Bolt, and Three Spears has this exact problem. Lightning Bolt and Three Spears wipe the board and Doom's a place to little effect. Yeah, like that's... I've, no, I've noticed that like specifically when I play multiplayer and when I'm playing like... Like when we were playing the community save um, Deadly and we had like the... Mind, for example, the Mind Thief was, was with us the entire time pretty much. And in that community save... Whoever was playing the Mind Thief was just running around killing things so quickly because we were playing on, I think, plus one. Um, that, you know, often, you know, you kind of feel like, oh, I couldn't really quite do my thing because my initiative is not, you know, as just straightforward as yours, right? But, you know, maybe that won't be so much of a problem. I don't know. Because certainly in terms of, like, damage dealing at level one, I mean, this character is so far insane. So, you know. Did we discuss when you earn the the uh, XP? We're treating it like a Mind Thief augment. You get the XP when you play the card. Um, that's interesting, though, because they've kind of... Um, yes. So there's a bit of a key difference here between these two cards, right? Well, I say there's a key difference. There isn't. But if you have a look at the, the box, right? So this is kind of like the action. So the fact that the elements are removed and the XP is removed from the box, like, so the actual act of doing the action, I'm pretty sure that that means that you would create the fire the turn you play it, gain the one XP the turn you play it, right? Because it's outside the, like, it's not part of the attack, like, Creating the fire and gaining the XP is not part of performing the attack. It's just, it's outside of that action. It is to do with that. And that's why, like, for example, this is up here. Um, and I don't think the other ones. Yeah, so. Also, I guess that's maybe the reason why the XP is not tied to these is to kind of like kind of give the character a bit of a safety net for XP gain. Because, like, there are certain characters and, you know, triangle triangles is... I'm going to moan about triangles again. Triangles is one of the worst ones for this. You know, all of their XP gain is linked to them using elements. So if you have a scenario where you can't use elements or you're with a party that's, you know, not generating them or whatever, you get out of your out of rhythm and you're not generating elements, then you can't really earn XP. So I can feel like maybe this character could, in theory, have a rough scenario where none of your projectiles really line up. The enemies are just annoying. Like, you would end up maybe coming out of a scenario with, like, next to no XP. So at least this is, like, some kind of safety guard around that. That, like, you would still leave the scenario with, like, a fair amount of progress on your character. Maybe. <clears throat> Right, the box is what is delayed. The rest of the card is immediate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely it. 
<laughs> he always appears. The chi Triangle's always swoops in when it needs to be, right? Bombard got the most XP in a four-player party. I'm kind of not surprised if they can just... Like, because it's just playing the card, right? Because it, it's similar to two minis in the fact that two minis gets XP for just commanding. Doesn't matter if the bear actually commands and you know does the command, but just the act of commanding gets you XP, and which is why it's so, like, why that character gets so um, fat <laughs> with XP. Um, anyone initiative? Um, if you move one or fewer hexes on your turn, gain retaliate two for the round. Two XP. Oh, but it's a burn. Oh, stinky. Oh. No, not about this one. Uh, is this going to work with Grappling Hook? I mean, not really. Oh boy, you need. we'd need to use something else with this. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this. Nuh-uh. <clears throat> Decent to play in mid-scenario if you are a tank. I don't think it is. Like, round-based retaliate effects are, in my opinion, never really good. Um, and this one's even worse because you're going to have to pair it with an early initiative, right? So the problem the problem is, is that what happens if you're against a bunch of enemies and they draw cards that are either ranged attacks, so they move away, or they draw, you know, an, an ability that isn't an attack, right? And I've played this card with another early initiative with the intention of doing my retaliate, right? I, like, let's just, I mean, for example, let's move on to this next card because it's actually, this works well with this top of this card, right? So you've got on 14 initiative and that was your plan. I mean, your, your plan's basically gone up in smoke. You're now just doing a move four, maybe, and an attack two, right? Uh, well, I guess you could do your projectile, so that's okay. But that's maybe a bad example because actually you could you could kind of salvage that turn pretty well. <laughs> but... You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I, I just don't like round based retaliate effects because I feel like they, you, they're too, like, they're too prone to just being picked apart by, by enemies or by situations that you find yourself in. So I'm not like, I don't think it's like awful. Like, there are times when it's good, but I just, it's not something that, I'm ever probably going to consider, like, unless, I mean, maybe this character really does turn into a proper, like, tank tank, like, where we need to do some moving and shielding and tanking for our team as well. And in that, in that case, then maybe something like this becomes a little bit more playable. But we've already got one burn that I'm very excited to play with. Um, so that will take us down to eight cards. You know, maybe we could maybe do another couple of burns towards the end of a scenario. But I don't know. The top of this is also so strong, so you'd have to have a really good reason to play this and not this, right? Full tank is one of the two play styles. Interesting. Okay, well, maybe we can, maybe we'll figure something out that can work a bit better with this then. The dot on the top makes you think this could be a cheap target for plus one and kept for a long time. Oh yeah, with like an attack six. Yeah. Also... Well, what you'd probably want to do with this, actually, is you'd probably want to add poison or or wounds, potentially. Maybe, probably poison. Because if you add, like, something like poison, you can immediately capitalize on it with, like, one of your other attacks, right? Because this is happening at the beginning of your turn as an extra attack. So if you could apply poison to a target, you could then follow up with another attack and get poison again, right? So, like, I feel like it would be a really good candidate for poison. Maybe expensive, but... You're always adding plus one. You don't need poison on top five. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting use though, I think. Gives it a bit of an interesting thing. Add immobilize, so you hit them again. <laughs> That's kind of, I kind of like that idea. Yeah. You ain't going anywhere. <laughs> All right. Obviously, very, very strong uh, top. I'm not a huge fan of the bottom because, I mean, I just don't like retaliate round effects, generally. But in a tank build, you can make something like this work, but... I like the fact that they've done this too. To Is it just because of this? Also kind of means that you can't... <laughs> Enhancing this feels bad, huh? Okay, next card anyway. Rolling into position. Um, one initiative, move one, shield oneself, one XP. So... 
I mean, that is a very solid tanking ability right there. Got move one, shield one. The quest continues. Finally figured out how to resubscribe via iPhone. That calls for a drink. <laughs> Thank you so much for the resub, Anthony. I appreciate it, buddy. Welcome back, my friend. Uh, 18 months now. I'm glad you figured it out, man. I appreciate it. I've been taking the time and effort to figure that one out, buddy. The quest continues, my friend. I hope you're having a great day. Maybe try the bottom sometimes, though, since Nit says it's good. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it has its place, but I'm just not... I don't know. Like, I've said this before about characters in general and and, and unless this, i don't know maybe this character will shock me but when i'm playing a character for the first time or i'm ever like making an, an, an impressions on a class i want to do what's unique about that character and tanking for me is not a unique mechanic right yeah it's something that you can use and need to play the game but if i was playing the bombard am i going to be like oh yeah i could move and shield one or am I going to be like, guys, I could blow everything up. Like, you know, like, let's be real here. <laughs> so unless maybe there's another really cool tanking mechanic that comes up, I don't know, or something. But, you know, it, like for me, I've I've played a tank a thousand times. I don't need to play another tank, right? Um, so I'd be just be more excited to play with the fun new mechanic. <clears throat> you're not sure how good that actually is but it sounds fun does it have to be on a tile with a monster yeah these things you basically basically what you do is you kind of like you kind of aim it's like an aiming mechanic so you aim at a hex and at the beginning of your next turn the attack goes off if an enemy is in that hex that you've aimed at so that's kind of like it's like you're kind of like you know, you're, you've got your you got your um your artillery, and you're kind of like winding it up, dialing in the coordinates, aiming, and then firing. It's kind of like thematically kind of how it stands. So move one shield one one XP. I mean, this is very good. Fourteen initiative. I mean, this is a very decent kind of like um uh, tanking ability. Having it on the top is always going to be like a little bit awkward to have like a tanking ability on the top of a card for me because I would much prefer to um you know have some kind of have this on the bottom of the cards so that then i could then do something with the top action in some way but of course this kind of works quite well with this so you know there's kind of like a quite a clear two card combo there that works fairly well together so um but yeah personally i like my move one and shield ones on the bottom of course like everybody else does but we'll see um 14 initiative, so our first really early initiative, which is good and would obviously be required for an ability like this. Also kind of mitigates this potentially. So, you know, an 81 of this would be terrible. So that's that's good. Uh, move four, immobilize self. That's actually also a really, really good um, ability. The immobilize here might sound, you know, a little bit annoying, but the chances are you're probably just going to move to a spot and maybe set up. Do we have some abilities that aren't moves on the bottom? I guess we do, don't we? We have the shield too, which was kind of cool. Um, we have the gain advantage, where we, we could just ignore the move too, maybe. So we have, like, so far we've seen a couple of cards that work quite well. But, we, you know, we don't need to necessarily move again. So I don't think this is necessarily a huge downside. Similar to, like, Saw... Um, Saw the basic I mean, who did a lot of the stuff to themselves. Wasn't that much of a drawback. You know, it's can be a bit annoying, but if you can get a, a cure potion, you could remove it if it was really a big pain. Um, invisibility cloak. I don't know if a character would like this would want to use that. Probably not. Well, I mean, we'll check out the perks in a bit. If it's a tanking character, it probably wants armor. So we'll see. <clears throat> We kind of need these early initiatives to hit projectile attacks for a barbly, even if it's just move two. Yeah, that's true. I think it's it's actually to be fair, they've actually done this in quite a nice way because by putting the shield on here, they've kind of they've quite cleverly kind of made this they've made this card very good for 
any build that you play, really. Really, they made it good for any build that you really want to play. Because if they had put, like, some kind of, I don't know, attack ability on the top here, then it would make it a little bit more awkward. But it, it kind of, it's a good dual-purpose card, you know? Both camps can take it. It crams quite a lot of different kind of builds into just one card, which is good. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously instantly playable. Yeah, you're you're going to be playing this, absolutely. Whatever build you're playing, 14 initiative, move four, even with a downside on it. That's playable. <clears throat> All right, barbed armor. Okay, here we go. This is looking... See, this is not so bad. It's not a burn, so... I'm starting to like it a little bit more. Retaliate oneself. If an enemy suffers damage this way, the enemy gains wound. That's really nice, actually. Okay. Very... That's... See, that's, that's better. Because it's kind of like you take one turn off to do a bit of retaliate. And retaliate one isn't a huge amount of damage, right? It's not... It's not really... It's not great. Um, but that wound is kind of like that extra value that really kind of puts puts it over the top. Yeah, I think I like this. Like as a one turn effect where I don't even think I would necessarily need to like hard tank with this. I think if you could just, if you could retaliate against say like two enemies and get two wounds off, I think you'd be reasonably happy with that. That's two damage plus two wounds. The only downside to this is, of course, the wound damage will only trigger on the next round. So, like, compared to sometimes other wound effects where you try and go early, wound the enemy, so you kind of get the extra damage that round. Obviously, this wound damage that you get will be delayed until the next round. So you kind of, like, it's not maybe as strong as wound can be, but it's still good, right? You wouldn't be happy with less than three targets. Three damage and three wounds. Yeah, maybe. I guess it depends on what type of enemy they are, right? Like, if you're against, like, living spirits, I'd be very happy for two living spirits. But, yeah, if it's, like, just regular guys who have no shield and can just be hit in other ways, easier ways. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. 13 initiative as well. So another another good early one. So definitely going to be playable just because of the initiative probably. Shield to self. This shield only applies to melee attacks. Okay, so we got the flip side. We got the flip. So actually, you could get up to shield three with this. Top of this and this. Although that feels really bad. You don't want to be doing that, right? Who wants to be playing like a, a 14 and a 13 initiative together? Oh, that's kind of rough. Has Spotify died again? Spotify has died again. I'm going to just start using the web browser. This thing is doing my head in. Um, yeah, you wouldn't want to use 14 and 13 initiative together because then it's like the rest of your initiative is going to be weird. <clears throat> The, bot the bottom with Roland's position plus retaliate persistent is shield 3 retaliate 2. <clears throat> this has got to feel bad when paired with Roland's position though. That's two of your precious fast initiative using one turn. Exactly. It's exactly how I feel about it. Like... You never, like, it never feels good to pair two, basically, leading initiatives together. Like, you should use your leading initiatives with other non-leading initiative cards, right? So, I, I totally agree with that. I feel like, yeah, that's a, that's a sub, I mean, in a, in a pinch, if you really needed to do something that turn, sure, it's not bad, but, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. Like, it's not, it doesn't feel cool to do that. With not only nine cards, how many turns do you want to spend not damaging something? Mm. 
Well, so far, apart from that one burn retaliate and that one burn big damage, we've, we've been fairly consistent without having to burn cards, though. But yeah, that's a fair point. Like I said before, the shielding on this character... You know, shielding doesn't really excite me because I've played lots of really good tanks, you know, over the time. And I think the game needs tanks. I think... And tanking is a fun way to play the game. But I would probably be leaning more towards trying to play the attacks, you know? <clears throat> the top spot is a bit unfortunate. We have a top shield one, a bottom range shield two, and the bottom of this is a shield two melee. Mm -hmm. Gonna be like maybe hard to get it to kind of work. Yeah, right. You could do retaliate one self with a ranged retaliate. Yeah, almost as if this should be the ranged retaliate, right? That's a very that's a very good observation. Because this retaliate can't be paired so far with a good shield that's like useful to the retaliate. I guess in theory like a disadvantaged ranged attack is still a ranged attack. So, I mean, I guess you could play it that way. <laughs> but probably unlikely. <laughs> hey, Symphony. What does this class specify, specialize in? So their specialty is um, projectiles. So basically, they aim at a hex. And then at the beginning of the next turn, if an enemy occupies that hex that's been marked, they shoot. So it's kind of like they, they set up an attack for the next turn. So it means you've got to work a little bit harder for your attacks. You've got to plan them a little bit. And your damage is a little bit delayed. But to uh, sort of make up for that, the attacks are generally pretty good. Like like this. Very good. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, the other, th the other thing about this card, which is kind of a little bit... Like, for me, this card was great because I could play this in any build. This card might end up just being a move two for me. A lot of the time. A 30 initiative move two. Which sometimes you need. But is not the most glamorous thing in the world. So possibly might consider playing the top at some point. But I, you'd need to get the good. You need to get good value out of it. And you'd probably want to have some kind of bottom shield. Or some way of shielding to prevent getting completely destroyed. <clears throat> okay. Next card. Unexpected Bombshell. Projectile range 4. At the start of your next turn, will perform an attack to stun. All enemies adjacent to the target suffer 1 damage. Wow. Alright, well that's pretty damn good too. 85 initiative, so this is one of those late ones. Yeah, that's pretty nuts as well. Wow. That's like massive boulder, but they put stun on it, chat. They increased the range, lowered the attack, but put stun on it. <laughs> it's delayed, but if you time it with the 85 initiative going late and then going early, I guess, well, one very real drawback to this is often with stun, stun is like a reactionary thing. At least it is for me a lot of the time. Like where, you know, you kind of, you play a stun and then the enemies flip all over all their initiatives and you go, right. Which enemy is causing me the biggest headache? Okay, I go and I stun you. Whereas this is very much like... You know, stun something, but maybe it's not the enemy that you really cared about. You know? So it's kind of like the stun kind of loses a little bit of value because you're not going to be able to just stun like, oh, that guy who's summoning over there, get him. Like, you know, you're not going to be able to prevent a bad flip unless, of course, it's like a preemptive. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, it's interesting. It kind of nerfs stun, in a way. You know? <clears throat> this is OP. I, I don't know if it's OP. Because like I said, I think the, a lot of the value of stun is that it allows you to just start, like, to pick and choose your target with uh, most of the other stuns in the game, right? Like, if you just took a, like, stun shot on the Tinkerer. You, know, you just kind of like you do it and then you the enemies flip over their cards and you're like, okay, great. Those enemies aren't doing anything. They're not really going to worry me too much. Oh, that guy over there, he's a problem. Let's stun that guy. 
right? Whereas this is like, okay, you're going to aim it, and then maybe that would be the enemy you want to stun, but maybe not. But then is the enemy that you want to stun adjacent to enough enemies to get the one damage? Like, that's going to really make it cool. You know what I mean? Like, it's very... This is a very good balancing of both the stun and the damage because it's... Because sometimes you're going to want to just stun something like an ancient artillery or some other ranged enemy that's really at the back of the room and you're never going to get this splash damage. And that's still very good, but it's not going to be... It doesn't do all of the things, you know? <sighs> Think how awful this class would be to play with digital ambiguity movement. <laughs> the number of, like, just enemies just constantly dodging your attacks. Yeah, that would feel pretty bad. He also locks him down for another projectile, though. The stun has extra value, too. Yeah, that's true. You could then follow it up. Really good. Actually, really good at locking down an elite or something, right? Yeah, that's fair. You could lock down an elite. Go late with this. Just target the hex the elite's on. Go early the next round. Stun them. Hit them with another projectile, like maybe your attack five. It's pretty good. Yeah, very good at isolating one enemy. Not necessarily good at, like, preventing, like, the traditional use of stun. It's more good at, like, locking one enemy completely down for a good few turns. Which is something, like, which is something that, like, um, the Mind Thief does quite well. And it's something that uh, the Berserker, like, does level one very well is that you can kind of 1v1 enemies quite nicely because you can just stun them for an infinity and they can't really do anything about it and you just attack them. So it's got that kind of vibe, you know? <clears throat> this in principle feels like a fair way to do non-lust stuns. Yeah, I think so. It's certainly a very good way of trying to, like, walk that line. Because I think stuns, are, uh, stuns like, should should be in the game in some function. I think it should be in the game. I know it's very powerful, but I do think it's a good, good thing to put in the game. But it's just how do you make it not just always broken? And this is kind of like a good way of trying to do it. I like it. I think this is a really fun card. Powerful, yes, but might not always like do what just attack to stun would do, which could be maybe a bit too strong, right? Is Crimson Scales ever going to come out on PC? Very unlikely because it's an unlicensed product. You can play it on Tabletop Simulator though. So if you wanted to like play a digital version of it, it's on Tabletop Simulator for free. You obviously have to buy Tabletop Simulator if you don't have it, but you can play it there. But it won't ever come to the digital version of Gloomhaven. Never. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Bottom, pull four. Self towards one enemy within range five. Oh, play this with grappling hook? Okay. You just want to zoom around? You got the zoomies chat? <laughs> just like, pull us out towards this guy and then just like... Straight across the room to the other guy. I mean, that could be a, a lot of movement, right? It's kind of funny. Like if you had a long corridor and you had like an enemy halfway along the corridor and an enemy like at the end of the corridor, you could just be like, zoop, zoop. Done. Hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> tabletop simulator is a hard sell to your friends because of the jank i'm not a huge fan of tabletop simulator myself it's one of those things where i feel like it's got its it's definitely got its benefits um and there are things that it does better even than the digital version of gloomhaven but yeah you kind of have to be willing to put a lot more personal effort into it in my opinion you know which not everybody wants to do me included to be fair a lot of the time Pull is not a move action. Yeah. 
So a way to speed across an annoying room. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of cool. I mean, you're taking this card for the top action regardless, but it's actually a pretty kind of fun bottom action too. <clears throat> Did I buy the game? Uh, Crimson Scales? Yes. It should be here, hopefully, within the next three weeks or so. I believe it's coming into, like, customs in Europe. Um, my plan is to do some physical streams of the game when I, when I do get it at some point. <clears throat> Been watching my stuff on YouTube. Good stuff. I appreciate it. Awesome, dude. Well, welcome to the live stream. Glad you're enjoying the content. You don't know everything about Gloomhaven. Monster decks being automated. Scenarios chosen automatically as well. It really makes things smoother for me. Yeah, I, I, I mean... I've said that I've said it's like a blessing and a curse for Gloomhaven Digital in many ways. So, you know, the game automating a load of stuff is great because you don't have to worry about managing all of that yourself. But on the flip side of that, by having to do those things yourself and learning to do those things yourself, you gain such a deeper appreciation of the rules of this game, how things work and how to improve and how to do be better at the game. And a lot of that stuff just gets lost in digital because the game does it all for you. So you never have to learn, like, oh, how enemy focus works properly. You never really have to learn, like, you never physically get the enemy decks out of the box and, like, thumb through the, the enemy decks to kind of learn what the enemy abilities are, right? Little things like that that I feel like actually can make you quite, give you quite a lot of experience of getting better at the game you don't get in digital, which is, like, the... Yeah, the flip side of that argument. And Tabletop Simulator, you do get that because you do have to still automate a few of those things. So, you know, that's one of the positives for that. <clears throat> Your group played Jaws on TTS, then went to Steam, went digital release. It was a great way to learn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. So I think I think we, we, we know this card is great. Moving on, we're definitely going to be including it and probably playing it for quite a long time, I think. That's my feeling with this one. Um, on to X cards. Chain Grapnel. Grapnel? Grapnel? Grapnel. Is that supposed to be Grapple? Is there an N? Is that an erroneous N? Chain Grapnel? What's a Grapnel? <laughs> Am I being dumb? Is that a thing? I... Shrapnel and grapple? Duh. <laughs> okay. Gra gra grapnel? I've never heard of that before. It's a grappling hook? Chained grapnel? That's what a grapnel is? I've never heard of that before. Well, look at that. I was just going to assume that they accidentally did a typo in it, but <laughs> I guess that would be, yeah, I mean, at this stage, that would be quite impressive. Like, there shouldn't, there won't be any obvious typos anymore. It's just another word for a grappling hook. Okay. Is this like, is this the kind of character where like, you know, you kind of, you get through like the, okay, all right, well, we've used, uh, we've, got, we've used the word cannon already. Oh, cannonball. Ball for sport, like. You got like a th thesaurus up, like grappling hook. Okay. <laughs> How many more words for <laughs> grappling is there? <laughs> oh no, new, new. I had to reset where I was. I like it though. Learn something new, huh? Attack two, range three. Pull to immobilize. One XP. The immobilize is kind of funky on this, right? So this is just like... Oh, oh okay. This is a way to try, to try and trigger that retaliate, I guess. Attack something for range 3. Pull it to immobilize it next to you. Hit your retaliate. Could be quite a good way of getting it off, but... You, then you haven't played any shield abilities, so... Gonna be needing that persistent shield or something. 
Immobilize is very good for projectiles, but that doesn't work great here. Yeah, I guess because it would keep them on one spot, right? But yeah, a bit awkward because... Well, I don't know. You could maybe... No, because you wouldn't want to... Yeah, because you need... Like I said, you need more, more of these. So this is interesting. Oh, this locks people down a bunch as well. Now, this is cool. Cheers. Keep up the great work. Hey, Phantom. Cheers to you too, buddy. Thank you so much, dude, for uh, everything that you do. Mod on the channel. I appreciate it, man. I hope you're doing well. 22 months now. The quest continues, my friend. What do you mean you know that Retired 2 is a persistent right? What? It was for the round. What am I about? Am I mad? Oh! Oh, I totally underestimated this card. I thought this was a round-based... Uh, I thought this was a round-based thing. That's why I was saying it was so bad. That's why I was like, ah, round-based retaliate. I hate it. <laughs> no, I didn't think... I, didn't, I, thought, I just read this purely as like... Gain retali like if you move one or fewer on your on your turn, just gain retaliate for the rest of this round. Like that's how I read it as a round based effect. And I was like, this is not good. I know you guys are like, oh, it's really good. I'm like, I don't really know about that. <laughs> but okay. No, now I know it is good. Yeah, okay. Now it's playable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like the pseudo persistent retaliate too. Yeah. Now now okay, now I'm in. Now I'm in. Alright. Alright, I understand now. Why you thought it was good? I was just like questioning questioning things then. Even then it's only solid because of what top is paired with. Yeah. But I mean I guess if you can consistently only move one every now and again, that's pretty good. Okay, like there's some there's more of something here now. Okay. Right, so now with this. Actually, could be pretty good. Because you could get an extra two damage off the Retaliate, maybe, if you've got it played there. By pulling, like, a ranged enemy in or something. Or I think that's probably what you'd want to do. Pull a ranged enemy in. Hit him with the Immobilize. That's, like, what you want to do, right? <clears throat> or just get around with pulls. That's true. It does say move, right? Oh, that's interesting, though. Yeah, that's an interesting wordage. If you move... Would pulling... Oh, I mean, you, you have moved, but you haven't performed a move action. I mean, that's that interaction's got a FAQ written all over it. Because you could interpret it as, well, I have technically moved. Like, I've moved hexes. I've more... I've, I've gone from a different hex to another hex. But I haven't performed the move action, right? It's... That's very interesting. I wonder if that's why the pulls even exist. If you've moved hexes, you've moved hexes, right? I feel like that's a really good... That's a good one for the FAQ, though, if that isn't in the FAQ. Because I can absolutely see why you could, in, like, infer that. Because then it's suddenly, like, it. it's like, oh, that... It almost feels like that was the intent. Like, oh, that's actually, like, a really cool way to get around that problem, right? It specifies hexes specifically for that. Yeah. Otherwise, I guess it would say if you moved one or less, like you could probably get rid of the word hexes. Yeah, that's fair. The hexes is there probably to try and kind of cover that off. Sorry, chat. I just got a message I have to reply to. Mm. 
but yeah, no, you can't get around it. Oh. A push pull is treated as movement, not a movement ability. Immobilize only prevents movement abilities. Google. Nice. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, like, thematically, that would have been really cool. But okay. I get it. Um, the bottom of this is is actually really good too. And I said it, I, I would be really keen to use bottom projectiles because like if you could get two projectiles on the same turn or if, for example, you could then like, like the way that I'm seeing is that sometimes you might want to go like super fast so you can't play like another projectile. I feel like having like playing a projectile every single turn feels like super cool. And presumably we could have two projectiles out here, which would be kind of neat. But this would be a really good way of trapping some enemies in for maybe like the big, the big boy, right? Could be a really good way of trying to set a pattern up. So it's a immobilize. So basically um, we have to put a marker down in a hex. We put a marker down in hex. If an enemy goes into this hex, it triggers the whole kind of effect, right? So at the start of our next turn, if an enemy is in this hex, it happens. If there's an enemy here, enemy here, but no enemy here, nothing happens. Uh, and the card will just go away. I mean, this is great. Bam, bam. Really useful, right? Yeah, like this is what this character kind of wants. We we're saying how good Immobilize would, is going to be with um with our projectiles. And this is a projectile that does Immobilize. So it's great. Really, really good. And it's a different, it's a different flavor as well, which is like, I quite like. Maybe not all, pro maybe not all projectiles need to be attacks. <laughs> you know, maybe we can get some different flavors up in here. And uh, this looks really good. All right, next card. But then their turn will come and goodbye immobilize. Well, what you could do, I mean, I guess the 46 initiative isn't great. But what you, what in, in theory, what you could do is you could get around some initiative problems, right? So what you could do is you could go like, you could like go real, you could go kind of late. Say like go with something like this, go kind of late. Projectile one enemy, immobilize the same enemy as well. So then that would set them up maybe. So I feel like it's just a bit of um. So you'd you'd want to go late with this for sure. Like forty six initiative is not the leading initiative for this ability, is it? Really? I mean, it would never be for any ability to be honest. It sucks, but. You'd consider probably playing it late to then go. No, no, no. You'd probably go. Would you go early with it? Or maybe you do go for the double projectile turn. Maybe this is the double projectile. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because if their turn comes and goes, then the mobilize is gone. So you like it's weird because you can't like you can't immobilize them. And then do one because then their turn will come and it'll go. Um. But I guess if you went super late, you could immobilize them. Then on the next turn, like the immobilize goes away, they don't move. So on the next turn, that would buy you the freedom to go like late. If you wanted to with another projectile targeting the same thing. And then you just have to go early on the next turn after that. So you'd kind of go late, late, early, I guess would be like the tempo of the turns. That's interesting. It happens if you go late, then early, then early. Wouldn't you want to go late, late, early though? Because you go late with the immobilize, then on the next turn, they'll try and obviously move and they can't. They'd lose their immobilize. So then you could hit them with another one. I mean, you could go early as well. You could go up. You could go late, early, early. But you could also just have the freedom to go late, late, early. If you go late, late, early, it doesn't help. But surely if you go if you go late and immobilize them, then on the next turn, they just remove their immobilize. So they're still in the same spot. 
then you'd go earlier the next turn. Bearing in mind that on the second late turn, you're playing another projectile, right? So you play this, then on the next turn, you play another projectile, plus whatever. Then on the next turn, you go early and trigger that projectile you played, right? <clears throat> this looks like an interesting class to play. You're not great at planning those. So you kind of think of a lot of your projectiles will end up doing nothing. Possibly. Yeah. But the thing is, is that there's a lot of enemies that just don't move or won't move a lot. So I feel like you're going to be able to safely pick an enemy out. It's not really going to move. You, know, you just pick the archer or you just pick the... Yeah, the shaman or whoever who's kind of like hiding somewhere, you know? Like, there's always a mixture of enemy types most of the time. It's quite rare that you get scenarios that are like just one type of enemy. Usually you'll get them with like a few different abilities. Like, so you'd have a couple, a couple of ranged enemies, a couple of melee, maybe a couple of kind of like supporty, you know, kind of magic type users. Maybe demons. I think I think you could you'll always you'll always be able to find something. <clears throat> anyway, I think it's I'm like this is one of those kind of projectiles that I felt like I want to play a little bit with to find like the best tempo to play it. But it's like Potentially, you could have a double projectile turn, which also feels like it would just be generally okay. Because you could use the immobilized more as a control element then, not just for setting up your projectiles, right? Because sometimes this could just be really good to just lock down three guards or something for a round. And you don't even you don't even need to worry about setting up a projectile on them. It's more just like, hey, I can lock these guys down next turn. Okay. Like... For example, if you were to like, if you were to open a door and then like everyone was to like kind of go back, you know, to invite the enemies towards the door, you could project, put your projectiles like in the door hex or near the door hex so that when they come close, they just trigger it, right? So like, I feel like this, this character will have some really interesting opportunities to open doors or like somebody opens a door for you and you plunk your projectile down in there and then they immediately start walking towards you. I feel like there's some good... Some good sort of use there with funneling the enemies with this kind of stuff, right? All right, man the cannon. At the start of your next four turns, one adjacent ally may perform attack three, range three. So four attack three, range threes. Hmm. <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. It is a lot of damage. So it's... It's obviously better than... Like, it's it's 12... 12 damage plus modifiers or whatever that might end up being. You know, level 1, that could be... <laughs> less than 12. High levels will be more than 12. It is also at the start of your next four turns... So, if there is no adjacent ally to you at the start of one of your turns during this four-turn period, you would lose a charge and nothing would happen. So, there is potential here that you could lose charges. I don't think this is that good. I think this is actually pretty poor. Actually. Unless you had some way of really kind of, I don't know, manipulating this in some good way. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess if you're playing a tank and you just want to play your kind of shielding cards, like your top action is like a shielding card, then maybe having some way to kind of contribute damage through this could be a thing. But I don't know. I think it's kind of bad. 12 damage rush blast to be over four consecutive turns. Exactly. That's why it's also kind of bad because, you know, if you could just kill an enemy and then you don't have to deal with it ever again, brilliant. There are benefits to both ways, right? The benefit of this being you could split that damage across loads of different targets, you know, four different targets. So if an enemy does die, it's not like, 
you know, wasted sort of thing. You know, you, you can mix and match things around, but it's also quite restrictive in the fact that you have to be adjacent. So, for example, if you're playing in a two-person party, this kind of thing can be quite hard to use because, you know, you're unless you're playing very synergistic characters that want to be near to each other all the time, like in general, in a two-player party, like someone's going to run off over here, you're going to run off a little bit over there, you know, you're going to separate. It's going to happen. So a car like this, I would say, is unplayable at two-player. And maybe at three... Three would be probably okay, but you'd, you'd really have to work on it. I guess if you had a bunch of summons, maybe either two or three might be another reason to consider it. But I don't know. I think this is pretty bad. <clears throat> well, the nine card hand burns like this that don't last all scenario just aren't worth it. Yeah. It is at least a, a burn that you can use whenever. Like, it's not like the kind of burn that really encourages you to use it straight away. Otherwise, you're losing value for every turn that you don't have it. This is the thing with that retaliate one, right? Is that this is the kind of effect that says build around me. You know, especially with all of the other kind of tanks that we've seen in the game. It's the kind of effect that says build around me. Make me good. How are you going to make... How are you going to take advantage of this? And it's the kind of thing that you say, oh, I want to play it on turn one. It's like shield spikes, right? Like you don't want to play shield spikes three long rests into the scenario. You want to play shield spikes on turn one. Uh, and it, and it's that... It, it, although I, I think you can play it later on in the scenario, it's one of those kinds of... Like it, it, it invokes that feeling of wanting to do that. Um... Uh, yeah, nah, not good. Just not good. <laughs> Just not good, I think. When you finish the Crimson Scales characters, do I plan on going over the characters in the Trail of Ashes? Yeah, I think a few people have asked me about that. Probably. A 21 initiative. One adjacent ally may forego the top action on their turn to have you perform attack for range three. Oh, dude. What? Really? Is this literally like a hold my beer moment on a card? Like you've got like your friend who's there like going, yay, I'm going to do this. And you say, no, 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 no. Hold my beer. I'll take your turn for you. <laughs> this is not, this is not good i mean it's a strong attack but this is not good card design i'm sorry it's not oh you guess if they're disarms i mean maybe but i mean as, as a solo player maybe it's okay but dude no way I, I mean, if you're playing solo, then it doesn't matter because you're just playing what's best and you want to win, right? You're doing whatever. But if I'm playing multiplayer, literally, like, all I, I get to play two cards a turn. Like, hey, don't play anything. <laughs> oh, dear. Like, oh. It's like literally someone looking at your, like, I think Gloomhaven does a really good job of stopping the kind of alpha gamer problem by giving everybody their own cards in their hands that are hidden you know, there's a lot of information. It's quite hard for one player to kind of, you know, pass all of the information around the table without, you know, playing open hand, I guess. But it's... It's, it's like, hey, it's like, how do you announce to the table you want to play this? Hey, hey, who doesn't want to play this turn? <laughs> how do you, like, announce this in a multiplayer game? Hey, who doesn't want to take a turn? You? A level one attack for range three is probably better than whatever they were about to do, though. That's the problem. That is actually the problem. Because you could argue that. But then how much of a fun gameplay experience is that? You're absolutely right. But how much of a fun gameplay experience is that? I totally agree. And you can defend that. Like, it's a really easy position to defend. Like, say, well, what are you doing on your turn? Oh, well, I'm doing an, uh, an attack to range to um, muddle. And, and you go, well, I can give you, I, we can do an attack. I could do an attack for range three if you just don't take your turn. You actually, it's actually you performing the action as well. Like, it's not even them performing the action. 
So you get to draw the modifier. You get to pick the enemy. <laughs> it's like they just don't take a turn. <laughs> like, oh, like, like, oh. We need more of these cards. I really dislike this card. <laughs> this is like the... I just don't like it. And this is coming from someone who predominantly plays solo, right? I don't like it. <laughs> Maybe I like winning more than I'm playing with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's... Yeah, I mean... Look, I mean like... You know, the, the name of the card's Man the Cannon. Thematically, it makes sense. Sure. But I don't feel like anybody should be told you shouldn't take your turn. <laughs> like, you know? Like, it's just... Oh. It's just not a good gameplay experience to be like, my character's better than your character, so you're going to now be playing my cards. <laughs> Okay. Sure. <laughs> My character is so good. It's got cards that stop you from playing. <laughs> that replace your cards. Oh, man. <laughs> you could do the attack, but I get the loot. <laughs> yeah, I suppose, like, you could kind of... Yeah, I suppose you could, like, bargain it that way. I just... Oh, I'm sorry. I just don't like it. I, I felt like... It's like playing like an Uno skip card on your own team. What are you doing? <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> it's missing a line of text at the bottom. Be as condescending about it as possible. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. Uh. Everything I see on this card is better, but the thematic is top notch. Yeah, I mean it it works really well. You know, in terms of them coming over and, you know, firing the cannon, but it's just like I I, I almost feel like what they could have done is they could have just lowered these values and just don't have it so that they have to forego. Like, just have it so it's like an attack to an attack two range three or something or an attack one range three maybe i don't know like forcing somebody to give up a turn is my problem the ability is fun and it is good but it's just the whole giving up a top action i would have just lowered the stats because this is like if, if you're playing solo this card is automatically an instant include probably because it's just the fact that it's an another way to attack like, if you are good at planning and preparing, it won't be hard to do this. And especially if you have, like, a support character, for example. So if you're playing, like, solo three or four player, and you have one character who's kind of, like, you know, is the support for your team. So is mainly just doing, like, a lot of heals and just, like, strengthens, blesses, whatever. Um, then they can quite often just give up a turn of not healing for you to do an attack for. Like, that's pretty good value. So... It's just really good. It's a fine move too. Yeah. 21 initiative as well is our th third earliest initiative we've seen so far. So yeah. This is this is this is gonna be a divisive card, I think. I, I don't know. Um Pillars of Smoke. Once per round, when an ally enters a hex adjacent to you, they may gain immobilize. Then if they have immobilize, they gain invisible. Wow, that's pretty unique. Once per round, when an ally enters a hex adjacent to you, they may gain immobilize. Then if they have immobilized, they gain invisible. So this is like this is like the hey, the, hey man. <laughs> I know, I know you I know you really like to play man the cannon. <laughs> it's another card to help you play more man the cannon. <laughs> I mean it's a cool ability though. 
Fun fact, they had to reword this because they realized this gave Blink Blade permanent invisibility. Ooh. Might be a bit of a problem. Greedy Tank has found a potion back and asked teammates to stay put. Two turns combo. Yeah. I feel like... I actually feel like this... This is actually really interesting. It's a really cool idea. Because, like, if you wanted to long rest, right? Let's say you're playing, like, a character and you really need to long rest. Because you need, you know, some items refreshed. Or, you know, you want the heal too. You really want to pick the card. If you've got this tank and it is tanking. Just running around doing all this good tanking stuff. You could just run up to it. Gain immobilize. Gain invisible. Chill. Long rest next round. Invisible. Chill out. It's actually a really cool idea. Really, really cool idea. It's like a it's like a different way of tanking. It's like you're kind of shielding your allies, like in a roundabout way. In a, in a very, very thematic card, too. I really like this ability, actually. I think this is this is fun. This is like the kind of card that makes me kind of excited to, to like mess around with it. Because there'll also be characters that, like, maybe you don't care about the immobilize. Like, ima imagine playing this with, like, Night Shroud, for example. Just, like, free invisibility on the Night Shroud. If you could, like, just get adjacent so he can come to adjacent to you and still be adjacent to an enemy. Pretty cool. You'll be playing a stealth sniper, but less fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could be... I mean, they are someone like a Doomstalker who could just chill in one spot for like the entire game. Doesn't care. Does this only apply to the first adjacent hex they enter? Well, it says once per round when an ally enters a hex adjacent to you, they may gain immobilize. So basically, it's like it's optional. So it says they may. So I guess what, what would happen in that instance is let's say... Let's say, let's use this, um, let's use a, a pattern up here as a good example, right? Let's say that, that this is the tank. So this is you, and you've got pillars of smoke up. If your ally came to here, that would be a hex adjacent to you. Um, they may choose to gain immobilize. Maybe they choose not to gain immobilize. Then I guess they could move here. They may choose to gain immobilize, right? Then here, they may choose to gain immobilize. Or is that the first, they said the first time caveat on that. Why did that... It just says once per round. Oh, so actually, no, you couldn't do that. Because it says once per round. So is it the first time that they enter a hex, they have to choose adjacent to you, right? Only one ally can turn invisible. Yes, but can you only... Like, for example, what if... No, actually, because it says once per round, when an ally enters, they may gain. So you can only... Once per round, somebody could gain immobilize through this to then gain invisibility. Yeah, so you could do like, you could do like what I just said. You could, in theory, like kind of move around and then choose to be immobilized here, right? But as soon as somebody chooses to take the immobilize, that's it for the round. It's done. This feels like an FAQ thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think it does need a little bit of clarifying. But I think that that's, that's, that's how I would interpret that. Is that every time that you move, but as soon as, as soon as somebody chooses, yes, I would now like to take the immobilize and then the invisibility, then that's it. For the rest of the round, like, nobody else can do it. But in theory, everybody could move around the tank as much as they like. Until until one person decides when they move into a hex that is adjacent to do it, it's free game. That's how I would understand it. <clears throat> but, well, actually, maybe not. Once per round, when an ally enters a hex adjacent to you, they may gain a... Yeah, maybe not. Oh, I, I don't know. I could see you could actually interpret it either way. Yeah, FAQ needs to be had for that, I think. 
Um, 11 initiative. That's really good. That's the earliest initiative so far. Heal to self. All attacks targeting you gain disadvantage that round. Great. Even, even if you're not playing a tank, this is an ability that has value. Because just getting a bit of poison off you, a bit of wound off you, whatever it is that you've got. Um, you've taken a few little hits here or there. It's going to be useful. 11 initiative is obviously going to work very well with trying to trigger off those um, those attacks, those projectiles. So, yeah. I mean, and, and you could just use it as a move to 11 initiative if you wanted to as well. Yeah, this is a good card. Definitely using this. Early initiative, you'll take this. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you could easily take this as just an 11 initiative move too. But actually, the bottom is kind of just good as well. Nice. Yeah, good card. And I actually, I actually really, I, I'd like to understand what the FAQ is for this because I actually feel like this is pretty, pretty fun. Wouldn't mind trying that. Uh, right, well, level two. We're on. Distant Retribution. Retaliate. Oh, before we get to level two, let's do perks, actually. Before we do that, perks time. Because I feel like that was a good understanding to like get a good steer of of what we're good at. You know, what we're not so good at. You know, will things like multiple attacks, you know, have any kind of extra effects? You know, how small can our deck get? You know, how efficient can we get at attacking? All of that kind of stuff. So remove two minus one cards. The classic consistency perk. Um, obviously, probably going to be one of the first perks you take. Uh, replace two plus zeros with two rolling PS3 cards. Interesting. Technically deck thinning. Replace one minus one card with one plus zero. Or plus three if projectile card. Ooh. Ooh. I like that one. Oh, I like that one a lot. I mean, just as replacing the minus one, it's good. It's good. It's a good general improvement anyway. To just get rid of those minus ones, right? It's, it's extra plus one damage anyway. And the plus three if projectile... Mmm. And if we can thin... I mean, we're, we're technically only... What? I suppose if we were to get this, we could go down another two cards. But technically, we'll probably only be down about two cards. This is only replace like for like. So not majorly thinning our deck here. That's good. That's a four damage difference. Yeah, it's huge. That's, that's basically like adding... That's almost like adding a crit in, right? Not quite, because you got like an attack five on your projectile, but like in many ways, that's almost as good as hitting a crit. If it's a projectile. Like if in fact it's better than the times two on the attack two stun, right? Because that would only be four. So it's actually better than a crit on the attack two stun. You're really just adding to the deck? Yeah. I guess we are. I'm not really moving. But if you draw this on attack five, that's eight damage instead of four. If you do the minus one. Yeah. I mean, it's still really good. But what I'm saying is, is that it's so good. It's almost like adding a crit. Like it's it's that good. Like you're replacing a minus one with like if it, if it lands on a projectile could be almost as good as a crit, you know? So it's it's incredibly strong. But you have to land it on the right target at the right time. But if we're doing a bunch of projectile stuff, you'd think that wouldn't be too hard. And especially that big spread damage one that we do. You know, the one with the big AoE. I mean, if you're strengthened or something like that. Actually, I don't think you'd want to be strengthened because this is uh this would be ambiguity. So I don't know how Yeah, with amb this would be uh, this would be an ambiguous situation with uh strengthened, but because I guess the you would say that the plus three if projectile is a positive but undefinable value because it's not i don't know that's an interesting one but still i think it's very good very very strong definitely one you're going to take no it's definable because it's just plus three mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> mm 
It's not an unknown effect, it's just a number. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, that's good. So it would work quite well with Strength Thunder. Um, add one plus two immobilize card. Just more damage. Replace one plus one card with two plus one retaliate one range three cards. Interesting. Place one plus one with two. So you're actually adding a card to your deck there. I mean, it's an improvement. But obviously, retali ranged retaliate is always kind of like nice to have. Mm. I guess if you're going down the tank build, this would be something that be would be useful to have. I don't like it as a general perk for just like any old build, though. I don't think it's probably worth it for that. I think if you're playing a tank build, it's something you could consider. Kind of slightly interesting. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be playing a tank build because you know, the retaliate could just help you kill something here or there. But also the enemy has to be attacking you. You have to have gone early. Like there's a lot of like ifs and buts, whether or not the retaliate would even matter. So maybe it's just kind of bad. <clears throat> Isn't diluting the deck with good cards better since it lowers the probability of drawing miss? Yeah. I just really like to get like a very refined deck. Like I don't like, you know, I, I just personally enjoy having a very refined deck. Refined deck enjoyer. <laughs> Counterpoint reduces the chance of drawing a crit. Also true. Well, also reduces the chance of drawing a miss. <laughs> if you're doing the late projectiles early next round, almost all your attacks trigger early, which is nice for drawing retaliate mod. True. But then if you're not being... Like, the thing is that if you're not being attacked that turn, is that really that good? Like, the thing is, I think it's too... It's similar to like the rolling shield one. So we'll, we'll, there's rolling shield here too. I think on some characters, they really benefit from them. But I've always found them to be a little bit inconsistent sometimes. Like they're not, they're not like my first perks that I go to. Like they'll be like a future perk down the line. Like at the moment, I feel like this is a very easy straight one to go for. This one, very simple, like get that. Um... You might consider doing this. I think at the moment, just plus two immobilize seems really good as well because it plays into your projectile synergy as well. So, you know, I feel like there's quite a few perks that I would consider over this so far. Um, add two plus one pull three self cards towards the target. Oh, so there's another grappling hook. Maybe it's just adding plus ones. Again, not something that's... Again, it's like you might not want to do that. So you might be like, oh, actually, nah, I'm, I'm good. I just take the plus one. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Strength and self is kind of worse than a plus two, in your opinion. Okay, add one plus zero strength and self card. It's only a one-off. So it w actually, to be honest, it's a it could it could be a bit awkward depending on when you draw it, right? There's situations when you draw it where it's not great. Um, you know, obviously, if you were to draw it off your projectile, it's like oh. But I guess if you could set up, if you could set up a strengthen, I mean, it's fine. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, strengthen is always good when you know you can combo it into two turns of it, right? You you want to strengthen on the bottom so that on that turn you get the attack. And on the next turn, you're going to get hopefully two attacks because you maybe you'll play a top and a bottom attack. You, know, you just try and get the max value out of the strengthen. I guess randomly strengthening you isn't a bad thing. Um, but it also might be a bit inconsistent and a bit like whatever at times. The stun, I think, is probably a little bit better because a stun is usually always good 
you know, if you, it, you might not kill the enemy, but now you've stunned the enemy, right? If you were to draw, like, a plus zero stun and uh, a plus two, you know, if you were to take either or, you know, sometimes you'd actually maybe prefer the stun because if the plus two wouldn't kill it, maybe it'd be better to just take it out of action for a round anyway and regroup. So, you know, the stun's always a, a nice thing to have. The plus one, uh, uh, plus one and wound is basically two damage. So you would probably take that maybe over the maybe over the stun rolling shield cards i think are fine but again not a perk that i'm probably too invested in because i would want to play like the damage build of this character i think the shooty shooty build <clears throat> the projectile plus threes are the highlight of the deck yeah it definitely feels that way everything else is sort of perks we've seen before and, you know, they have value, but they're not setting the world on fire here. Add two rolling heal ones. Same as the strength, the shield, really. But sometimes the heal is better than the shield, depending, obviously, on when you draw it. Like, you draw the the rolling shield one when it doesn't matter. You, whatever. At least they're rolling. At least they're not taking up, like, what could be a, a good card. You know, maybe you then roll it into something really good. Ignore negative scenario effects and remove one plus zero. Actually, pretty decent because it removes the card at the same time. Um, I don't know how many negative scenario effects are in Crimson Scales, but if, let's say, it's fairly similar to the distribution of regular Gloomhaven, it'll be a worthwhile perk. Um, ignore negative item effects and remove another one. Also a good perk. It kind of makes it valuable even if you're not playing hard on the, on the, um, on the tank build because, you know, sometimes it's just easy to wear a piece of armor and you get to remove one of those plus zeros right and that's just gives you a nice easy um item to put into your chest slot that's not going to cause you any issues so if you've got two people who are fighting over you know invisibility clapes or other <laughs> like other armors it allows you the ability to just go i can take an armor and even though i might not be hardcore mr tank i can take a few hits for the team when needed and i can survive and just improves your survivability a bit <clears throat> so yeah i mean like apart from this i feel like everything else is just kind of geared around us just getting like a bit better with our damage really and well actually to be honest some of it's a little bit flat but i guess the plus two immobilize is pretty strong it's certainly not a very like it's certainly not an incredibly strong set of perks maybe with this one aside but we're gonna have to draw it at the right time so it's it's okay. Like, it's a it's a fairly okay set of perks, right? Right. Let's do it. Level two. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The bottom four and the top four are what you would take first. I think the top four, yes. The bottom four, I think... Quite possibly. Uh, at least I would... I would probably take... The bottom two. I don't know about the rolling heel and the shield. Those were the other two. I'd maybe consider the plus two immobilizers. Not sure. Right, distant retribution. Retaliate two, range three. One XP, round based effect, 12 initiative. Hooray! A good retaliate card. Yeah. So. The range on this makes it, like, in my opinion, you either need to give range on retaliates or you need to come up with a character to be able to deal with that, like immobilize or disadvantage. So you know, the way that the red guard deals with that is with a lot of immobilize pulls, uh, ways to kind of keep enemies next to them, um, you know, giving them disadvantage. All of that kind of stuff works to keep the retaliate them within retaliate range, do the damage. If you don't have tools like that at your disposal, you're going to need a ranged retaliate. And this is it. So, this is. Depending on how many targets you can get with this, this is pretty good. Is this as good as the. Um, like, in theory, if you could be really clever, I think I would probably prefer barbed armor if. You know, you could get kind of like the same number of targets. I think I would prefer the Retaliate 1 and Wound 
over just straight retaliate two i think but of course the range three makes this super flexible so you're probably going to be just fine with that we didn't have a move um shield did we move something shield on the bottom though we did have a couple of like uh we had the shield twos that we could play alongside this that give us like shield two against melee or shield two against ranged so we do have a way to kind of shield two retaliate two in a single turn um we'd have to just pick our enemies that we have to fight though right how much hp does this class have at level nine 26 it's a lot we are actually a pretty pretty sizable health pool <clears throat> retaliate 4-2 with that bottom move one shield oneself oh sorry you mean with the burn bomb right yeah 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 absolutely but that wouldn't have range right so that retaliate wouldn't have range this is where it can get funky because you have retaliate two at range three but retaliate, you don't give all of your retaliate range. Which is like, the. I think that like a lot of people don't. Maybe that's a, a slight rule thing that kind of gets passed by. But it's essentially, yeah. So you would have retaliate 2, range 3. And if you played the other thing, you'd have also innate retaliate 2, right? Yeah, do 4 to melees and 2 to ranged. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, th I feel like, um, you know, if you could have a decent shield as well shield two i mean enemies melt very quickly to retaliate but you have to be able to sustain it through shield healing other means and just having like shield two i'm not sure that's going to be necessarily enough but i guess we'd have maybe armor i wonder if the crimson scales armor is in i saw crimson scales i uh, jaws the line i wonder if chain armor like the one that gives you a round long shield one because that'd be really good on this character actually super good you definitely don't care about charges you'd much rather just have like let's have a big retaliate turn and you just play this you play the round long um shield effect it's all good how do i think this class compares to others in crimson scales you're on the fence between average and underpowered um I think it's I think it's powerful. I think it's powerful. Um not like crazy. But the power level for this character also comes from the fact that it's pretty easy. Like out of all of the characters that we've seen so far, I would say this is the easiest one to play. Like out of all of them. Possibly I don't know, possibly the Herophant was also because you just give prayers out, but I, I would say this is the easiest one to play. I know that, like, it looks difficult because you, you're kind of like, oh, well, yeah, but what if your projectiles don't hit? I don't think that's going to be an issue. I really think that you're going to be able to hit your projectiles most of the time. I think you might whiff every now and again, but I mean, a lot of the time you're just going to be attacking five and <laughs> just doing a bunch of damage. I would like to see a few more decent attacks, though. I do feel like uh, at the moment, especially at level one and with our X cards, we don't have like I feel like we're looking for more attacks, right? I don't I don't feel like we've quite got that balance yet of like aggressive projectile attacks. Because we've got that one big burn, we've got the stun one, we've got the attack five one, but that's kind of it. And then we had the one that was like attack one, attack one, PS1, attack one, PS2, which is okay, but the actual bottom of that card was pretty decent as well to just play. Gave us advantage. So, you know, it's I feel like we're probably looking for another cool attack. <clears throat> You'd raise me Star Slinger in levels of ease. Yeah, but this this character so far hasn't had to worry about elements at all. Like, it doesn't have any interaction. I mean, maybe that will change, but we make elements, but I haven't seen us consume one yet. And I feel like consuming elements can be one of the harder elements of the game for a lot of people because you, you need to make it the previous turn, then use it. But also, you know, they can be taken away by uh, other monsters or even by your own allies who want to use it for something else, which then can make your character a bit more like, you know, can be a bit frustrating. Whereas this character, I, I feel like you can kind of play your game 
And nobody can really, like, mess with that, really. Except for the fact that perhaps somebody will kill things before you get to kill them. Because your, your damage is delayed a turn compared to them. Like, it, it feels fairly, fairly straightforward to me. You want a class called Bombard to actually do some bombarding? Yeah, I mean, that's my feeling, too. <laughs> that's why this kind of stuff is... It's good. But it's just not where my interest is. Um, but to be honest, you know... I move one, shield one on 12 initiative. It's kind of, like, playable regardless of what it is that you're playing. Um, let's have a look at the other level two. Rapid fire. Projectile. Here we go. Range three. Target three. At the start of your next turn, perform attack four, burn. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh, this is kind of hard, though, because you'd need to lock. You need three targets to not move. Wow. a lot of damage that's a lot of damage it sounds really fun but actually is this maybe just not great oh because it's it's three separate targets so that means that all three of your projectiles have to be in play you'd have to go super late mark the three go super early and hope they don't move right so against certain enemies that might be a bit risky and then it's 12 damage which is, like we said before, 12 damage is, you know, it's decent, but this could easily just go down to 8 damage. And then it's like, ooh. It's bleh. Oof. Bad initiative for this effect. Yes, you're going to have to pair it with, um, with, probably with a late initiative, I would assume. <clears throat> Mm -mm. Starts thing I got a more situational attack four range three target three at level two that I liked. Was that kind of burn? I feel like the burn is what makes this a harder sell. Because we've already got one big attack that's kind of like a burn. And and this I feel like sure it's maybe a little bit more damage, but this has so much more potential to just blow the enemy out. I tell you what, this is better at, like, low player counts, actually. Like, this card's probably... This attack's probably going to be a bit weird if you're playing two-player. Whereas I feel like this is going to be absolutely fine at two-player. Yes, but they had one more card. Okay. Well... I don't know. Maybe I was in a... Maybe I was in, I was in a favorable mood that day. <laughs> maybe I'm in a bad mood today. I don't know. But I, 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 I feel like it's, it's good, but if we could strengthen ourselves to do these, hmm, the bottom is attack one, range three, target three. Now that's decent. In fact, that's a pretty good way to flip a bunch of modifiers. So if you were fishing, if you were fishing for a strength of modifier or whatever, that's not bad. Hmm. Yeah, this is a uh, kind of interesting. I did say as well we were looking for things that weren't necessarily moves on the bottom, right? Because we had that um, that big move and immobilize, right? So we could have something like this, which is something that we're definitely going to be playing. And then we need to find abilities that you know don't punish us for being immobilized, and that's certainly one of them. <clears throat> Starts thing a loss had the benefit of their permanent advantage. Yeah. Those plus two immobilizers and rolling heal shields retaliates a good here. True. Getting to just attack a bunch of stuff is is always a good way. Like that's how triangles operated in many ways. It's just why crystallizing blast was such a requirement for that character, um, because you just needed to flip a bunch of modifiers and just. Like, let's hope we generate a bunch of elements and then the next turn you'll be like, cool, right. What are we working with? And you could then tailor what your next turn was going to be around what your flips were. So. Hmm. 
I mean, I, I, I mean, this card needed to be an early initiative. It needed to be an early initiative. Otherwise, this doesn't work. This is clearly like a card for the tanks. But the problem is, is that early initiative cards are always going to be usable for every build regardless. So even if you do design a card like this, which is like, oh, yeah, well, it's kind of like meant to be a tanking card. It's like even people who are not playing that build might take it just because it's a low initiative um, and use it as a move too, which is never really a great reason to take a card in my opinion. But yeah, sometimes needs must and you, you just want to be able to do those late, early, late, early and it just helps your character tick over nicely. Now, I do feel at the moment we have a bit of an imbalance where we're lacking a few like attacking cards and I, I kind of wish we had a non-burn here at level two. But, it, it, you know, this is going to be a good attack when we finally play the top. And the bottom is very good and it's something to do while we're immobilized. I think I think I'll be taking rapid fire, personally. But, like I said, that might be, you know, for initiative reasons and just because this is just a decent effect anyway. A lot of people might just take distant retribution regardless of what they're doing. <clears throat> Personally, you take the one card for sheer useful bottom. This one with the initiative doesn't wow you. You mean you mean you take this one? You would take distant retribution over rapid fire. I feel like that. If, if that, I think that's fair. Because, like I said, it's it's just a very usable card. It's always gonna it's always gonna do something. Apart from maybe the top might might not do anything sometimes, but yeah always going to be useful to you for me though i, I think i'll probably take rapid fire just because i want some more tax all right you think you're talking about the next card pelican okay level three stationary enhancements disarm self on the next three attacks targeting you gain shield two 20 initiative Disarm self sounds to be bad, but it's not a penalty for this class. You can still lay projectiles and tank. That's true. Although having said that, you would disarm yourself until the end of your next turn, right? So you would be disarmed... So you couldn't play a projectile this turn, but of course you probably wouldn't because this is a top action anyway. So you could play a you could play a projectile next turn, and that would be fine. Yeah. That's fair. You can actually get around this drawback pretty quickly. Like it's not, not that bad. Plus, to be honest, like you might just want to filter in a turn of playing like shielding and stuff like that. Obviously, with I like, retaliate, this would be pretty damn good. Especially if you could if you could do this before you went into a room. So you'd play this and then maybe on the next turn after that you would run in and with your retaliate too. Like if you time this well to be before you open a door. There's definitely some good ways of like just going into a room with this with three charges and just going have at it, right? Before you rest on even numbered hands as well. Yeah. Projectile late, go on 20 the next turn with this. Attack triggers before you use the disarm. Next turn, another projectile. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good way of doing it. It's, it's, you're kind of filtering in a bit of shield without really doing, without, you know, kind of committing. Which is quite nice. The bottom is immobilized self on your next three attacks. Add the bonus shown to the attack. Oh, this is like that kind of like the new mechanic, right? This is kind of this. You see this on multiple classes in Crimson Scales. So the first charge would be a push two. The second charge would be a plus two attack. And the third charge would be a PS3. That's really good. Oh boy, is that good. I mean, obviously the plus two attack is the best here. But the PS3 could be relevant.
And of course, your uh, projectiles will trigger this. Yeah, this is a really good card. Kind of got a bit of something for everyone. I do really want a reusable, another reusable projectile top, though. That's what I'm really fishing for at the moment, but... This is a pretty damn good card. This could actually be used for any build, really. You could filter in at the right time. This is obviously a bit more towards the attacking build. And 20 initiative. It's all good. Push 2 and PS3 are situationally quite a bit better than the plus 2 attack. Well, yeah, but if you have, if it's at the right time on the right enemy. Yeah, like the, the push 2 is better than the plus 2 if you're pushing them into a damage trap. But there aren't always damage traps, you know? Like... They can be, but the plus two attack is just a reliable, uh, you know, and a reliable figure. Damn you, Spotify. It just crashes. It, it plays the song and then it just crashes at the end of the song. You'd usually play this on a turn you want the push two, I guess. Yeah. So use this, do an attack, get the push, push two. Then on your next turn... I guess what you could do as well, um, in theory with the double cannon, you could add a push two and plus two attack on the same turn, right? So if you use double cannon, you could choose one to push two and one to add plus two to the attack. That's pretty good. In a single turn, if you didn't have to move, just double cannon, attack something for five and attack another guy for three plus with push two. That seems pretty legit. Bottom is good, but with the top, you just don't like the idea of spending a lot of turns not attacking. Especially in smaller parties, you don't think it contributes to winning enough. Well, I think that that's the, that's the kind of... I think that that's the kind of mysterious thing about this character. Is its damage is delayed, or you find it through retaliate sometimes. Um, and retaliate damage is always really hard to measure. Because, you know, some scenarios it feels amazing. You're like, oh yeah, I'm doing so much damage. But then other scenarios it does like hardly anything and you just feel like you're not contributing enough. But, like, I, I agree that for me, you often just want good cards that push the scenario forward, help further the win condition. And, you know, taking more time is never helping the players. It's hurting players. Because enemies don't have stamina. You do. So any turn that you're taking that is not attacking or not kind of at least progressing the scenario in some positive way is a turn that you're wasting so you do have to be careful with that for sure hey Stella is this new digital DLC no this is Crimson Scales which is the uh, community kind of fan made uh, expansion or spin-off game that you can uh, they are physical copies available for pre-order until sunday it's a bunch of new classes a whole new kind of scenario um like i'm sorry campaign to play through you can even get minis it's a very highly produced play tested like really really well yeah so we're just reviewing um the classes <clears throat> You think with the level five and just the tank tanking top is good. Okay, well, we'll have to get into that. But in theory, I think this card's <laughs> pretty decent. And I, I quite like the bottom. I think like the bottom is something. Okay. Here's what I was fishing for. Come on. Projectile, range four, target two. At the start of your next turn, perform attack three, PS2. Sold. Taking this card. We're done. <laughs> Easy pick, chat. Easy. Not even close. Get out of here. <laughs> I mean, it's attack three. It's it's a, it's attack six. It's two targets. It's PS2 as well, which means that this thing is going to be good against certain enemy types, but also really reliable towards the mid to late game. So you don't feel like you're picking a card at level three that by the time you get to like level seven... It's like, oh, it just doesn't feel quite as good anymore. It's like, no, it's still going to be pretty relevant. Yeah, this is... 
this is what I was fishing for, right? And and it's funny because like I mean this is more damage, right? Sure, but I mean you just play this a couple of times and you kinda you kinda beat out the value of rapid fire already. How it is. This is what you want to do with this class? Yeah, me too. Damage Bombard is a really good spot at four, and Tank Bard is a really good spot at five. Not a huge fan of the level five for damage, but everyone will be a fan of the tanks level five. Okay. Unless you're all in tank, no reason not to take this one. Yeah. I mean, we, we needed another projectile, and this is it. So pretty easy. Attack 2 on the bottom, range 3. Gain advantage on your next projectile attack. Also actually insanely good. We're going to be hitting that plus 3 modifier. That's what we're doing. Oh, man. So you could, you could play this, and then you just play the top attack 5. Projectile with the attack 5. Profit. Like, especially if there's only one enemy left, or it's like, I want to kill this boss or this elite so if you're like focus firing you use the bottom if you're like no we need to go like wide you use the top so depending on like the situation of of the room composition about where you are you, you you've got a really great option top or bottom and the initiative's great for playing the projectile the initiative's yeah probably not great well i mean it's probably fine for the, the bottom of this I guess it doesn't really matter what the initiative is for this. You're not moving, so... I guess if you're not moving, you'd probably prefer to have late initiative. Because then the enemies can come towards you. So yeah. Actually, the initiative probably does work quite well for the bottom two. I actually like both level threes, but probably would go for Twin Blast. For me, as a, as a damage lover, this is not even close. Um, but actually, I can appreciate that actually... The top of this, because of the way and the the way that projectile works, and the way that it's like the beginning of your next turn, and it actually doesn't classify as playing an attack that turn, kind of gets around this in quite a clever way. But I do feel like Twin Blast is yeah, I mean, slam dunk, easy pick. Right, level four, hurried repairs. Heal one plus X self, where X is the number of hexes you have moved this turn. All attacks targeting you gain disadvantage this round. Heal one plus X self, where X is the number of... Okay, could be a big heal. All attacks targeting you gain disadvantage. This could be a good way of getting that retaliate trigger, huh? Off of a ranged enemy. Heal 5 plus this device, pretty juicy, yeah. Plus, if you are playing with that, that permanent retaliate bonus. Oh no, sorry, because you would have moved more than what moved more than one, so it wouldn't work. I guess you could. I guess in theory you could just move one and heal two. That's probably not as fun though. Yeah. So sorry, it doesn't actually really work very well with that, because you'd have moved a bunch, most likely. Still a good num good amount of heat good amount of healing though. <clears throat> you have a disadvantage bottom at level one for that. I mean, as far as heal cards go, it's pretty decent. Of course, I would have preferred this to have been something on the bottom, but you can't have everything. <laughs> Like a, a lesser effect, but on the bottom of a card, you know. Like for me, I, I like the I like the little and often. That's the school of healing that I that I prescribe to. Little and often. I'm not a fan of the big flashy like heal tens because I'm just like no, just let me heal two every now and again. I'm happy, you know. It's no drifter card, but it's good. But not every class can be the best healer to ever exist. True. So it's um yeah I mean it's very it's it's very usable. Twenty five initiative is fine, usable, just 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 fine, fine to good. 
Uh, move three. Ignore all figures during this movement. All figures move... What? What? So this is jump without being jump? Because it wants to... Because it doesn't want you to be able to move through traps. Or through like hazardous terrain. Right? It's basically just move through enemies. So it's kind of like one element of jump. It's trample. <laughs> yeah. Jump, but only for enemy figures. Yeah. It's like we wanted to kind of give you jump, but we also didn't want to just put move through jump on the card because that would probably, that would inherently make the card just more useful probably. Um, which I think is fine. You know, make it a bit more specialized. So then it's actually used for the intended use, which is to do this damage, rather than maybe it's use that most players would end up doing, which is just jumping around the scenario. Because <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, I'll take a move three jump all day. But this isn't that. <clears throat> jump on this with level four would not be too OP, in your opinion. I mean, just to put it a jump. At level four, you feel you can have move three jump. We, we, we already have move three jump, though. We had a level one card that was move three jump. So then it would, would it not just be the same card? But maybe, like, it would be a very easy like for like replacement because it does the same thing and it does something that's a bit better in certain situations. I don't know. I quite like it because I feel like it's, like, they, they want it to be used for a purpose. And they've achieved it. Mod, thanks for that deletion. Oh, that, was, that was me. I spotted that one fast. <laughs> Jump is a little redundant here since you can already pass through models. Plus one move would be better. Oh, I see what you mean for the enhancements. Maybe in, oh, enhancing a level four card, though, I think is one of those kind of... Like, it's got to be a pretty pretty spicy enhancement for the average player to probably fork out the money for a level four, like a level four card enhancement, right? You got to be pretty deep in the game to be able to afford that. Yeah, jump, jump's definitely got some extra value to it, but I, I like the card as it is. I think like they've done a good value there. They've done a good... Uh, they've done a good thing of just making the card different. Subtly, but it's different. And that to me is more fun. Because, you see, like I said, most people would probably pick this card if it was just a move three jump. If you wanted to enhance jump, sure. But I, I, I would. I, that does give you some extra advantages, but I don't know if that was really what, what I would want to spend my cash on, personally. I don't know. Um. So, yeah, I mean, again, like a pretty decent kind of healy tanky card or maybe a bit of damage card. Like, not bad. <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Powerful buckshot. So attack four, range three. Add plus two attack if the target suffered damage from a projectile ability this round. Oh, boy. Hatchet says hello, boys. We got a repeat shot. <laughs> we got a repeat shot. Um, I mean, that's great. I mean, this will just delete enemies. You've you've probably already done a very good attack against the enemy anyway. The range three, I guess, is a little bit weird because a lot of your projectiles are like range four. So you, you might need to like move a little bit closer or maybe... That's a little bit like... You won't necessarily maybe be able to stay rooted where you are. You might have to move, but you could probably stay where you are. Especially if it's a stun one. If you're clever, you stun lock them and do this as your last follow-up. Like, so on the first turn, you get them with the stun one. Um, and you go late, get them with the stun one. On the next turn, you get them with this, like, the big damage one.
I mean, that could be really good. You could lock. And then you just, like, this is the last one in the chain sort of thing. Or even just, like, doing the twin shot. Uh, twin blast. And then, like, you know, just, like, maybe ki finishing one enemy off. Starting on another one. And then, and then like, absolutely decimating the other one, right? It's pretty damn good. <laughs> you like this class? Yeah, I think this is a really fun damage dealing class for sure. I mean, that, I mean, this card has the word heal on it. This card has the word attack on it. I mean, feels like a very easy decision. The only, I guess the only thing is the initiative on this is maybe a little bit strange. Because like if you want to try and really nuke something down quickly, you might want to do this early. So I guess maybe you'd want to pair it with an early card. Maybe. But that shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> Stop promoting Healer Asia. <laughs> Look, this is my personal feelings, all right? I said I like heals when they're little and often. So just make more heals little and often. Then I'd be like a huge fan. And also perhaps like make it so that you attack and then you heal after the attack. I'd also be appreciated. <laughs> like uh, the other hatchet card that does that. <laughs> Care package, right? Best heal card in the game because it's got the word attack written on it. Um, attack four, range three, target two. <laughs> I mean, that's also, like, as a, as a one-time burn, like, bottom effect, like, we're at the end of the dungeon, you need to kill enemies quick, or you just want to get some XP, this isn't bad. I mean, it's, like, I know that it feels like, well, hang on a minute, you don't like the ones that were, like, a, a attack 12, like, why is this one better? Well, because it's on the bottom of, of the card for a start, which gives you infinitely more options to combo off with another top to do a double attack so the tempo play of having an attack like this on the bottom is is always quite good yes the values aren't great but the tempo that this can buy you is is useful and many a time in my deadly playthrough has it come down to me having just two cards left in my hand and one of them is a big bottom attack card and the other one is a good top attack card like burn as well and we just do the double burn on the last turn to try and win you know that happens so yeah Excellent card. Excellent, excellent card. Easy. Easy pick again for me now. We're rolling. Right. Unbreakable position. Level 5. Shield oneself. Each time you are targeted by an attack this round, gain Retaliate X, where X is equal to your shield value for the attack. Ooh. Okay. 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 So, like, with some of the big bottom shields that we have. I mean, at a minimum, this is going to be shield one, retaliate one. At a, at a minimum. So, this can be improved quite a bit. <clears throat> Three versus melee enemies? Yeah, potentially. Yeah, you'd definitely play this with the, um, well, you'd have to kind of play it with the melee shield one, right? You wouldn't play it with the ranged one because the retaliate wouldn't matter then. It would just be a shield one top, which would be, I mean, pretty underwhelming. Okay, if you play this at the right time, this could be quite good. I also just like the, the like, I like these cards when they kind of infinitely scale up, you know, because it's just retaliate X where X is equal to your shield value for the attack. So immediately, like, items start to improve this. Um, any kind of, like, other buff that your allies can give you will start to improve this. So I like these kinds of effects when they're just, like, infinitely scaling, essentially. Because also, it's kind of, like, just fun. Because you'd be like, okay, how can I break this and get, like, retaliate 10? Like, I get, like, shield 10, retaliate 10. And you create some monstrosity of a party comp composition to try and do that. You know, so I, I like that. I like, I like it when they infinitely scale like this. <clears throat> there's an expansion for this expansion called trail of ashes yeah i think a lot of people have been posting in the discord about it today 
I, I haven't purchased it myself yet. I'm, I might do. I haven't got my... Like, I feel like I'm, I'm starting to get into that Kickstarter mentality with Crimson Scales, which I said I would never do again, which is the buying a load of stuff when I haven't received the first stuff. You know? It's like when you, you buy something on Kickstarter and then it takes two years to get to you and then they, you know, they've already got a Kickstarter like up for the expansion before you've even received the base game and it's like well if you don't buy it you're not going to have the complete game you know not that i think that you know obviously gloomhaven is a known quantity and it's basically just more gloomhaven you know so it's going to be great but i do feel like it's starting to pull pull at me in that way a little bit i kind of have to though the pre-order ends on sunday yeah, or I can just, you know, slide into board game 613's DMs. Be like, help me. I'm an idiot. <laughs> it's kind of what happened last time. Well, he slid into my DMs. was like, are you sure you don't want to buy it? And I'm like, oh man, yeah, maybe I should buy it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, maybe you should. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> You're going to bully me into looking at Rove in August during the Kickstarter? Well, I have a little bit of news on that. Uh, I have been approached by Board Game 613 about that. And um, yes, I will be doing some... Um, he's going to send me a demo copy for me to play. And I, I am definitely very interested in it. So yeah, we'll probably... I might even play some on stream, depending on obviously... I'll do a bit of testing off and play it myself and see how we go. But might play a bit on stream, but I'll certainly be probably doing some video content around it. Because um, yeah, it looks great. <clears throat> all the cool kids are getting it i know um so yeah good really good tanking card i this is the kind of card that really makes me want to play a tank sometimes so good the next four times you would suffer damage from an attack gain shield two retaliate two range three for the attack pretty similar to the other one um I mean, it's it's a, it's a, it's an all-in-one effect, you know. It's really nice because it's like a complete package. It's like just really good armor, <laughs> but it also has retaliate two range three on it. A health saved, a damage dealt is good. Yeah, if you can get, if you can get that retaliate two off all four times i think it's good um you you are a nine card character though so you'd have to pick your pick your battles and i think that that's one of the problems with playing a tanking character is that when you're playing a tanking character quite often you're kind of encouraged to burn a card here or there fairly early like we had that retaliate one you know you kind of like yeah the game kind of like those effects usually like defensive position you know or um the skirmishing maneuver or defense defensive stance um sorry defensive stance is one sk skirmishing maneuver you know juggernaut brute um i think of the other ones shield spikes red guard like those kind of characters, like those kinds of builds, they really usually benefit from having some kind of cool, some cool burn. <clears throat> Do you not use two losses in your first cycle as a nine card class? <laughs> Funnily enough, no, I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not good enough to get to get around that problem. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a very good. It's a very good tanking card. This all in one, very very good. Sharpen focus. The next time you place a projectile, any enemy occupying that hex gains immobilize. Add plus two attack and PS3 on your next projectile attack. Oh, so this is instant lockdown. This is a really good one to play between rooms. This is really good one to play between rooms. But will you have the time to play it? Because this is a very much a do-nothing top. A very much do-nothing top. Because this would be like, oh, I don't do anything this turn. Next turn, I probably don't do much either because I just play a projectile. 
and then I finally have a good turn, right? It's like several turns out. It's like three turns out to get the value. Hmm. That's quite... I mean, if yeah, if you could play it between rooms, it's, it's pretty great, but like in the middle of a scenario, oh, like when you're in the heat of battle, I don't know. Play between rooms, play the top on even hands, bottom on odd hands. So the bottom is move one, add plus one range, immobilize, and gain an advantage on your next ranged attack this turn. I mean, that's pretty, pretty usable. That's begging for a plus one movement enhancement as well. Move one, one range, immobilize, and gain advantage. So what would that what would that be though? I guess it would be like the double cannons or oh I guess you'd use it with powerful buckshot, wouldn't you? Jesus. Oh boy. Oh that would blow somebody up. That's crazy. I mean you wouldn't need the range. Well, you might need the range actually. Actually, that's a good point. I even mentioned that maybe the range 3 here you know, some of your, some of your um, projectiles are range four. Well, if somehow something got funky, just guarantees it. That's really good. Is there a card that really benefits from the plus one range on the bottom? I guess probably double cannons, or potentially. Um, They're probably just double cannons. You'd only get the advantage on one... One of these two targets, though. So, that's something to be considered. Didn't we have another, like, just value attack? This, maybe? Yeah, the plus one range doesn't feel like it's going to be super relevant, huh? Plus one range, take it or leave it. Immobilize, very good for setting up... Um, setting up another projectile. Yeah, this is... I mean, for me, I think I've got to take sharp and focus. I, I think the top is actually maybe a little bit... A little bit bad because it's just it's very delayed it's super delayed and that i think might be a bit of a problem but against certain enemies or if you play at the right time between rooms there's still a spot for it but i just i feel like most of the time if you're playing on increased difficulty and you're under pressure it's a card that does nothing and i and i, and I don't like cards that kind of do nothing at least the turn you kind of play them you know an effect like this obviously would be really good on the bottom you know suddenly that would blow this ability like wide open like it'd be so much better but it's not unfortunately you could um you know you could play it with the immobilize <laughs> the immobilized projectile bottom which isn't an attack right so that would really waste this but yeah Basically, it's a bit hard to justify on a nine-card hand given projectiles are already delayed. Yeah, because it's three. It's a three-turn wait. It's a three-turn wait to just get plus two attack and pierce three. And I mean, the immobilize has some value because you get that on the next turn. So you kind of get added immobilize next turn, and then the following turn you'd get your plus two attack and pierce three. But yeah, I think maybe against certain enemies, like when you're trying to go really hard, possibly. But I feel like the bottom here is actually just super good with this. Oh, that'd be so good. Now you know, you're attacking for six with advantage. Yes, please. All right. Level six. Meteoric Blast. Projectile. Range five. At the start of your next turn, perform. Attack five. All figures adjacent to the target suffer two damage. Oh, hell yeah. 
Ooh. Massive boulder. Yeah. Superior massive boulder for sure. This is great. This is really good. Range five as well. Look at that. <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. Nice. That's a lot of damage. I mean, is this going to be like a, this is probably our new best attack, right? Do we actually replace? No, we probably don't replace other projectiles, do we? I guess it is there in theory, there's a way that you could just be playing a projectile every turn and just that's that's what you do. Don't play anything but projectiles. Because if we had... So with a nine card hand, if we have more than four projectiles, that's probably not really worth it. Also, what's kind of funny is that you could still get an attack from a projectile on a long rest, I guess. It's kind of funny. Like, how many... How? What's the right number of projectiles? Are we saying, like, three or four? Maybe the exploding cannonball could be replaced. The one with stun? Are we taking a card with stun out of our deck? I don't believe you. <laughs> Never. For projectiles, if you want to go late than early, usually, so playing one every turn is maybe not that good. Yeah. Like, what's the sweet spot? Three? Four? Four seems like too much to me. Three seems about right. Three really good ones. And then you have, like, this is your, like, your fourth top action. And then double cannon is your fifth top action? Yeah. Maybe? So then maybe we just replace the attack five? Where's the attack five? Because it's just strictly better? Interesting one. I don't know what the sweet spot is going to be. I really don't. I feel like three or four is probably what you want. <clears throat> four is fine. A few more options if they have good bombs. That's true. You could play a few more if the actual bottom ability is is playable in a pinch. I think that's fair. The bottom of this is move two. The next time you would suffer damage this round, discard this card and suffer no damage instead. No. I mean, if if you're if you're against like a boss and it's like, if you're playing <laughs> the gloom, sure. <laughs> uh, so there are certain situations where like, you know, you're getting attacked by one thing for a bunch, sure. But usually, like, if you're playing three or four player, are you not just getting attacked by a bunch of stuff all the time? If you play the bottom, you can't play the top. And the top does a lot of damage. That's very true. I definitely agree with you on that. That's very valid. Yeah. Not, I mean, maybe. But. I think it's very hard to justify playing this. Really hard. You actually don't dislike the bot, but the top is just better. Maybe if you're playing two player, it might have a little bit more value because there's less enemies on the board. So maybe you are just needing, maybe it is more of a case of just negating one attack or maybe two and you're okay to take the damage from the second. I don't know. All right, what's the other level six then? Prolific perforation. Attack four, pierce one. Ooh, look at that. That's mega skewer. It's almost walking ballista.
I mean, that's good. Has to be, like, away from us, though. So this hex doesn't do anything, so... But is that... Mm, is this a pattern that's really going to line up that much? Is this just going to be hitting two things a lot of the time? I mean, attacking eight PS1 is still very good. Very, very good. That's some deep terror stuff right there. Yeah. <laughs> we had no reusable attacks at some levels, and now we get two good attacks. Yeah. It's, it's like classic Gloomhaven Jeopardy. I was like, which one do you choose? Which I, I'm kind of okay with, because sometimes you don't want to... Like, if you, if you make it so that every single level up, there's one card for each build, then, you know, potentially one build will always just be better. Like, there's no, like, there's, there's little wiggle room there because, like, one build may end up just being better and then it kind of nulls the other build out. At least this way that maybe you could kind of do a bit of both. Like at this level, you could have the option to go back and take another tanking card. Or you could just take a good, you know, a good attack or something. And like you can at least do something. Like I said, I don't think like always builds are like exclusive of each other. It's quite hard to have like an exclusive build that's like, I'm only doing this one thing. Like most of the time, your build will still have a few of you know, common cards because um, it's going to help your... It'll be what makes your character tick. <clears throat> How does this one get classified as melee? Yes, it is melee. It's like... It's basically because of this is not... Not there, but yeah, it's... It's melee. Otherwise, this would probably be like attack for range one. This wouldn't exist. It would just be this. Or something. But yeah, it is melee. You think you choose the massive boulder and maybe change the big burn exploding cannonball? Yeah, that's true. I mean, this does do like a really good reusable in interpretation of that card because you're doing two pure damage rather than doing an attack three ps1 but you're obviously not burning a card which is pretty important too yeah i think out of these two cards oh i haven't done the bottom of this card yet move six push one target all enemies adjacent to each x you entered with the move ability that's a bit is a big move for two xp and some other kind of so like in a certain scenario this could be kind of cool there's a bunch of traps around or like hazardous terrain. Like there's some, some occasionally going to be some neat things you could do, but pretty bad. Crap. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big move. Like sometimes a big move is just something that you need, you know? And we don't have anything like that. Actually, like the, our biggest move has been four. And that immobilizes us at the end of it. So it's not really a great, a great move. So this character does lack like one sort of like, especially if you're like, you have that mission where it's like, get out. You just need to. I guess you could use your pulls. Those cool grappling hooks maybe is more of kind of like pseudo movement. But maybe that won't always line up for you in a really favorable way. I don't know. Yeah, I think I would probably take meteoric blast because the damage output of this is pretty insane 26 initiative as well is pretty usable 62 is yeah verging on unusable initiative as well so this would kind of require a card to be played with it whereas i think like meteoric blast i'd be really happy to play you know this probably on like 26 i mean you might want to play it on a late initiative i guess but like i feel like it's a usable usable thing we can figure something out with this um yeah easy i think it's a fairly fairly easy pick but this is quite this is quite good damage to be fair but it's not as much damage as this right airborne skyrocket projectile range five at the start of your next turn perform an attack six immobilize we're just throwing them at us now huh chat just throwing them at us here you go have another one I and mean, how many of these can we have <laughs> How many of these can we sustain? Oh, God. 
Meteoric Blast, because you also like the bottom more. Both tops are good. Yeah, I agree with that. Another Bonkers attack. Maybe not as good as Meteoric Blast, though. Yeah, in theory, you could have swapped these two. At least going from the top actions. And that would not surprise me. Like, I wouldn't be like, oh, this one feels like a level 6. This one feels like a level 7 card, you know? This attack 6 mobilize. I mean, this is attack 6. It says the word attack 6 written on it. Where do we draw the line? When is enough enough? <laughs> Maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. But the immobilize, of course, is going to help us lock them down for another turn. So that's like the... That's the thing. It's actually really usable because you could just do this, attack them, immobilize them. You know, go late. There's a... Actually, to be fair, I feel like I, by saying that this is the easiest character to play, I think maybe... Maybe I'm mis like I'm like misunderstanding how hard it's actually gonna be to continually get those really nice like late early late early kind of like like there's a flow to playing this character that actually may be a little bit more difficult than it it seems. So maybe maybe I was yeah a bit presumptuous to say this is the easiest character to play because really there is quite an intricate balance between your projectiles and when you play them and positioning of the board and stuff like the ability themselves the, itself does not sound difficult and it's not difficult to understand but playing it well could be quite difficult like the abilities are very easy to understand it's just can you play them well it's a transition of rests and projectiles, yeah. You think we did a projectile every other round for the most part? Or maybe two in a row, then move to the next room. Hmm, interesting. The bottom is pull six. <laughs> Another big grappling hook. The biggest of grappling hooks. I mean, sure, we liked the other ones, so... I'm still not sure... How usable that's going to be. It feels like that would be really good with the tank build. Because you just want to zoom around. Yeah, being a tank. One of the biggest struggles of tanking. Is often that you just. You can't quite get to where you need to be. And this kind of just allows you to just zoom around. Like you don't have move fours, fives. You just have pulls, sixes. Which are essentially like jump six. As long as there's an enemy there, of course. Still lacks the finishing face punch. Yeah. This top could replace the stun level one. Almost as good if it hit it as a melee. If it hit a melee. True. The stun one does also have like that splash damage, I guess. But I mean, it's only one damage splash damage. It might be pretty negligible at this point in time. Plus we got this, which is like improved splash damage. Yeah, I could maybe see that. Like, attack two is... Has become underwhelming. Because this character does have the potential to draw some... Some okay pulls, but... You could also just be drawing... You know, fairly average cards, you know. That could be just an attack three or... Four a lot of the time. And this could be, obviously, like an attack eight. So, could be double pretty good all right well what's the other level seven then ballistic barrage projectile range five at the start of your next turn perform attack three target all enemies within range two of this hex there's a burn hmm I mean, this is the kind of thing that I like, right? This is like unstable upheaval, but you're playing it like the next turn. Unfortunately, it's ranged, so I can't combo it with Warhammer. So immediately demoted some points, but is a ranged attack, right? So could use Piercing Bow. Could use... Like some of the robes. 
would be pretty good. You want to draw those Pierce attack modifier flips at level 7? That's true. You, you also have Pierce attack modifiers. So maybe the bow is not the best. I, I Items for this character are kind of interesting, actually. Because it's... Your damage is kind of delayed. I mean, you obviously want armor items, I think. Just, just even if you're not really going down that route, it's just, it feels rude not to wear armor when you've got the option to wear armor. But then, like, hand slot items, I guess you'd want... Oh, I guess you'd want bombs, right? Bombs would be super good. You suddenly turn, like, those attack six into, like, hit, like AoEs and stuff, possibly, in a pinch. Seems pretty good. Spicy bottom, though. One adjacent ally may perform attack five, range four. And it and they don't have to give up their turn. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. Better. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's very good. Attack 5, range 4 for free. Did take it. How do bombs work with projectiles? I mean, they would work because you're just basically performing an attack against that thing, right? So, like, with something like this. um, That's a bad example. Let's find one that's just basic. What was the immobilized one? That one. So, like, with this, you're just doing... An attack six, right? It is still classified as a ranged attack. Right? All projectile attacks are still ranged attacks, right? I mean, it says like... It says range, like the project... Placing the marker is ranged. So I just kind of assumed that they were always ranged attacks. Maybe that was wrong yeah it's ranged okay cool i was gonna say i was like i guess technically it doesn't really say ranged here but it says range here and that usually basically like usually if there's range written anywhere on the card it's a ranged attack <laughs> usually not always the case, but generally, like, it's like, yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> okay. Two interesting cards. Like, you've kind of got the safe card here. Like, this is obviously just good. And this is, you know, usable, but very bad initiative um this is yeah maybe slightly more usable initiative but the top is a burn which is something that you don't probably want to carry too much but it, it it could potentially do a bunch of damage like this could be crazy and this is with planning, very good as well. I don't know. I think if you, were, if I was, I, I'm probably in the market for a bottom ability, so I think I might take this. Like I feel like at this point in time, we're probably, we're probably pretty good with our projectiles, right? Like we said, what's the that kind of tipping point? Does an attack six immobilize projectile really improve? And does the pull six move south on the bottom? Is that really great? I mean, yeah, maybe. And I, I think I would probably lean a little bit towards this because then it allows us to play a projectile, let an ally move next to us, you know, get an attack off like that. You know, as in a late turn, this is a pretty good late ability because an ally, you can just say to your ally, like, oh, make sure you end your turn next to me. And they're like, yeah, sure. That shouldn't be too hard. Hmm. Interesting, though. Very good burn at the end, though. Yeah, and, and the burn, when you do eventually play it, you will hopefully get really crazy value out of it. 
Yeah, okay. I think I, I think I would go for Ballistic Barrage here. Even though that I think that this is probably the safe pick. We've got a bunch of projectiles already. And I think it would be better to invest in some strong bottom abilities. Um, defense Mechanism. Level 8. Retaliate 3 self. If an enemy suffers damage this way, that enemy gains wound. Alright, there you go. There's an improved version of that level 1 card. So instead of it being Retaliate 1, it's now Retaliate 3. Um, just straight upgrade. Extra plus 2 Retaliate. There you go. Um... Obviously, if you're going in on the tank build and you have a bunch of shields, just, you know, you don't even maybe need shield. But if you can ride this out, super good value. 18 initiative as well is going to be good. So make sure that the uh, the wound, um, well, say the wound damage will have to go into the following round as well. So the wound damage is a bit delayed, but yeah, good. Great for tanks, yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> Good character versus immobilized. If he was immobilized, he could still pull himself into position, right? Yeah, I think so. And, and there is some value to that on this bottom of this card. But also, the way I like to see it is like, we should be... Like, enemies... There aren't too many enemies that immobilize you. But this character inherently already has immobilize built into one of their cards, a self-immobilize. So, for me, I look... You could, yeah, so you could look at it from two angles. You could say, cool, I want an, an ability that would still allow me to move, even though I'm immobilized. Or you could say, okay, I want to fill out my deck with some cards that I can use while I'm immobilized, right? Which is like this. So it's up to you. Like, it's like a different... Depending on what you need, there's something here for you. Uh, 18, 18 initiative um, is good. One of our lowest, not not our lowest, but pretty low for us. Move three, disarm, range two. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's got the second best word in the game written on it. First one being stun. Followed by another great word, range. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it. This is a very, a very, very good card. Like this ability is premium, premium, premium ability. You will not struggle if you have this, right? You will not struggle, um, moving around, disarming one annoying enemy, killing another one. Like it's just v valuable. Can still tank and projectile. Yeah, true. Also, if you disarm an enemy, then they will basically... You can determine their behavior a lot more, right? Because a disarmed enemy will always move towards you as if they're performing a melee attack. So in theory, you could go almost like a late disarm and then like projectile into a spot and you'd know that they were going to go there or something. You know what I mean? Like disarm changes the enemy behavior. So, I don't feel like that's the best use of this, but, you know, you could uh, you could argue that there's a little bit of value there that actually potentially changes their, their behavior slightly. So, could, in theory, get them into a position that you want them to be in? If they draw a move. Yeah, of course. But, you know, if they were to draw... You know, if, it's, if it's an archer, for example, and you want to try and get them to get, you, get closer to you, they'll do it. That bottom is incredible, especially for a class that needs more movement. Yep. A any any and every class in the game would take this ability. Any and every class. Like, if we were playing, um, like, Gripe's Gloom Draft, if this card came up, this would almost be, like, an instant first pick for me. Like, like if we're going to rank, like, drafting, gl like, Gloomhaven abilities, this has got to be up there as one of the best abilities you can draft. If this was like, if this was in the same pack as the mind's weakness, though, we're talking the mind's weakness. I'm afraid it's every time, but you know, <laughs> we're talking about drafting abilities. It's pretty high. Um. Okay. Other level eight. It's, I mean, the other le level eight might be kind of a little bit irrelevant, which is which is kind of sad because I say this is just so good. 
A quadruple cannons? Okay. No, I'm in. Sold. It's great. <laughs> What's better than two cannons, boys? Four cannons. Attack three, range four. That, uh, I mean, that pattern's a bit... Is this really going to end up just being attack three on three things? I mean, it's still good. Quadruple cannons from double cannons? Yeah. An extra two cannons. Yeah, it's probably going to hit three things. That's nine damage. Range range four is actually... I mean, this card's a big AoE anyway, so there's plenty of rotation that you could do if it was lower than range four, but range four just makes it, yeah, like super simple to do. And it's, it's good value. It's really good value. A6 initiative, the bomb is move four. The next time you place a projectile, perform a move two. Interesting. Free move. Free move. That's kind of fun. It's a really nice card, but that does sound bottom though. I mean, yeah, that's the problem. I feel like whenever you make a card like this, just the other card kind of becomes irrelevant unless it also has this word on it. Could just be a move six. Great for this character. Yeah, I mean, the, we were saying we did, our biggest move so far was a move four. Which is not brilliant. It's fine. Usable. And some characters are probably even a bit jealous of us. Because <laughs> we have a move. We have at least a couple of move threes and a move four. But we're not. We're hardly like a very mobile character right now, are we? Range 4 means you can hit a triangle with two range 5s and a range 6. Mm -hmm. The problem is for the damage build, you need early initiatives to get projectiles off. That's fair. I mean, at the moment, I don't know what, like, in terms of, like, the cards that I've kind of roughly picked. Um, I think we've been mainly picking late-ish cards. I guess that was 26, but... What was that? 32? Uh, 84... Yeah, I guess we've been probably picking fairly late. Yeah, so like, really, we're still probably using the level ones, like 13 and 14. We're probably, well, we're definitely still using 14. 13, uh, we're probably not using 13 anymore. Yeah, this would be a good opportunity to just replace with a nice early initiative, wouldn't it? Well, it kind of sucks, but I, I do feel like this is the best pick. Early initiative does something. Yeah. The first eight feels stronger, but you'd want this card. I, I definitely agree. I feel like this is... This is just so usable, but this is fun. And this is kind of interesting too, but... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, move three to Sam. It's got to be... You hate doing it, but the early initiative is why it breaks the tie. Well, I, I don't even think... I don't even... To be honest, I don't even think these cards are tied. Like I said, I think... Like, as soon as this ability gets written on a card... Especially if it's like this... And it's, and it's incomplete by this... Like, this basically just reads to sound whatever you want, you know? You'd save your boots for this card, probably. Just to get whatever it is that you need to disarm disarmed. Um, okay... Level nines. I mean, this looks good. Supercharged gunpowder. Projectile range five. At the start of your next turn, perform an attack three PS3. If the target occupies the hex, add the conditions shown to the attack. If a target. Okay. Okay. So this would be potentially, let's say we're attacking this guy. This could potentially be, and there were two people here. This could be an attack three, PS3, with a mobilize and wound on three figures. Nine damage, plus you could probably argue that it's more like 12 damage because of the wound. And a mobilize. That's pretty good. 
but it's not like insanely broken like compared to some of our others right it's it's powerful but it's on the same kind of power level as some of the previous cards that we've had like at level seven <clears throat> initiative boots a good item for this guy I don't think so, because the, the problem with initiative boots is it's plus 10, minus 10, or it's plus 20, minus 20. And this character feels like they want to go like 15 initiative or 80. You don't want to change a 15. I mean, I guess maybe you might want to, if you're against a certain enemy type, maybe you'd want to change your 15 to like a 5. You know, or, some, or one of those kind of initiatives to like, into single digits, maybe. But I don't know, I don't. I don't know. Could be good to guarantee it. Like if you if your worry is guaranteeing it, then sure. But against a lot of enemies that probably have fairly average initiatives, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. <clears throat> Add target doesn't work with projectiles, does it? Uh, well, if you you mean like as an attack modifier, or you mean like something like backup ammunition? I think it would. Why would it not? The bottom of this card. Oh, okay. Move three. Gain add target on your next range attack this turn. Then discard this card. It, it says this turn. So it would never trigger on a projectile anyway. Because projectiles trigger at the beginning of your turn. But in theory, I do think add target would work with projectiles. But th this particular card does not. Because you would always have a projectile trigger at the beginning of your turn, right? Welcome to the quest. Therenti, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome in. You feel I'm going to lose some projectiles? <laughs> Gone missing. Use your level 3 target 2 projectile into this to do a double powerful buckshot for an 18 damage turn. That's true. Oh yeah, this is actually super good for the buckshot because it's very easy for you to then tag like several things with projectiles, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, maybe the power level of this card is the bottom. Not the top. The top looks flashy, but actually... The bottom is almost almost reads like move three, gain add... Like, it's like double damage, basically. Because adding target on your buckshot is just insane. Where are you, Buckshot? Because with something like... Yeah, like you said, with Twin Blasts, it's not hard to do. Get two things targeted up with projectiles. And then... Hit two things for six. I mean, that's pretty nuts, huh? And to be honest, the other thing as well is that not it's not even like if you're just playing the game. If you're just playing the game like fairly, like just honestly, like even if your projectile stuff doesn't really kind of work out, like even if you don't pull off the wombo combo mega attack, to be honest, just having a move three and then getting something like, for example, if you did take quadruple cannons or you're running double cannons, just being able to like just tag on another target onto those because maybe you maybe there's only two guys here and then the other guy is like i don't know over here like you can't quite get the pattern right then you can just add it to the pattern essentially like because that's how add target works with pattern effects is that basically you just get another attack three at that, that, that range right so like it actually works as just a general like ability it's pretty safe anyway you don't have to go for the wombo combo. It's still good.
If you use with Buckshot, you're going on 84 to hit your projectiles, though. <laughs> a little rough, unless you're immobilizing. Yeah, you'd have to be very clever. You'd have to time it with the... You'd have to time it with the immobilize. You'd have to do it with the bottom immobilize um, projectile ability from... Was it like level... Was it like one of the X cards, I think, was that? Yeah, you'd have to... Or, or you just do it against guys that aren't moving, right? That's the other thing. You just do it against guys that aren't moving. You know, ancient artillery or you know, archers that just generally don't move off their spot. There's a lot of enemies that don't move off their spot once they find it. <clears throat> the extra damage from Meteoric Blast triggers this too, even though it isn't an attack. Um... Where are you, Meteoric Blast? Not sure what you mean. <laughs> Just predict where the enemies are going. Ease, yeah. So, this is... This is just very solid. Very, very solid. Like has an amazing wombo combo but also just is legitly good read the bomb of what of of meteoric blast i'm not sure what you're talking about i don't see how this combos with that card Oh, okay. You mean this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, this is the combo, right? Um, Yeah, so, I mean, like, let's see what the other level 9 is. But this is... I mean, if we're going damage, this is kind of what it is. I'm, I'm wondering if this is going to be a, a tanky a tanky card. Superior upgrade. Once per round, you may perform a mobilized self to, to add plus 2 attack to your next attack that round. 2 XP. Permanent. Burn. <laughs> now that's a lot of damage. Oh no. Why did he do this to us? Why couldn't you just have put something like defensive stance on the top of this? Why couldn't this be like you gain permanent shield too? There you go. How about it? <laughs> Why couldn't you make the decision easy? I mean, that's pretty good. Just, it, it's basically, it's basically the mind's weakness. That's, this should show you how broken the mind's weakness was. That it's now a level 9 card and you have to immobilize yourself for it. And it's only once per round. Why, mind's weakness is fine. <laughs> oh, and it's a burn and you can't, you can't cycle it. <laughs> Yeah. Pretty good. Applies to ranged as well, though. Well, I mean, you're only a ranged character, right? So it's like, same deal. Still weaker than my sweetness. <laughs> it is. That's the tragic part. <laughs> it's so tragic. Even though, yes, it does apply to ranged attacks, but this character only has ranged attacks. So, you know, you got that one. You got like one melee attack, right? That was that weird kind of skewer. Got a couple of skewers. But it's... Yeah. <laughs> mm. To be fair, the Mind's Venus is broken because it was all melee attacks. Yeah. And let's say this one is once per round, you can get plus two. And you have to immobilize yourself. <laughs> oh... Uh, I mean, it's... It's obviously pretty cool, but it's only a plus two attack buff once per round. And also the immobilizing yourself could be a real drawback at certain points, right? At certain points, it could be like a real bummer. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, I just don't want to do it.
You just don't want to do it. This character can stay in one place all right, though. Yeah. But... You're immobilized until the end of your next turn. So... Like, what if the enemies, like, if they're all dead or whatever, you're just kind of stuck. I don't know. I, I think I prefer the other cards right now. I think I prefer this over this. Because we're nine card character. So burning this, th this is a card that says burn me quick, right? This, is, this isn't a card that says burn me in the last room. It's like, no, this is a card that says... You want to burn me on the first turn of the game, don't you? You're like, hmm, kind of do. And you could even make use of it immediately with a bottom attack. <laughs> you know? Like, yes, I, I do want to do that. Nine initiative, move one shield. Well, I mean, this is the big shield card. We knew, we knew something was coming. Hmm. <clears throat> You're not a big fan of this on a nine card character? Yeah, I, I tend to agree because it's, 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 it encourages you to burn it so hard. And then when you're going to be immobilized, like how many extra turns is it going to take you to like catch up, you know? Because what in certain scenarios, you won't be able to burn this because the immobilized would just be like too brutal because you might be like having to move really fast. It's a long scenario. There's a lot of movement. You might need to move a little bit every turn. Like on a scenario where it's... It's like get from point A to point B. And there's loads of enemies in the way. And you can kind of kill most of the enemies along the way if you want. But generally speaking, you're always going to be wanting to like move... Shuffling forward like two or three every turn or every other turn. You're going to need to be making some forward progress, right? Because otherwise you're just going to end up running out of stamina. And a card like this just kind of punishes you because you're just gonna not be able to move on certain turns and yes we got plenty of really good bottom abilities to play when we are immobilized that's not a problem but i just feel like on certain scenarios it's gonna be a, hind a hindrance and and it's a hindrance for just plus two attack i don't know what if there was an item if you had an item that makes you immune to immobilize now that's spicy is there such an item um So there's the there's pendants that make you immune to poison and wound. There's a helmet that makes you immune to uh, muddle. Is there a helmet that makes you immune to immobilize? Or boots that make you immune to immobilize? There's a helmet? What's the helmet that makes you immune to immobilize? Is it a base Gloomhaven item or is this something new? Some, something I haven't seen. I mean, if, if there is, then... I think that that's insane. Yeah. I mean, then I think it's worth it. <laughs> then it's basically just reads plus two attack. Because you will mo mostly attack once, maybe twice per turn. Pair with saw bones, research the cure. Oh, nice. There's a prosperity item that makes you immune to immobilize. Why can't I think of it? Helmet. Need to immobilize. Well, if you get that item, then I think you'd be. Then you're kind of maybe. Maybe you'd be stupid not to take superior upgrade. Because although this, I think, has some really good combo potential. This is just plus two damage a turn. And, you know, this would give you that one turn of doing like an extra 12 or something, maybe, or six. What was it, I think? Um, an extra six. Is it four? Five, yeah, four plus two because of the, the buckshot. Um, 
I mean, this will give you value every single turn and you don't need to hit the combo. You just play the game. Or is that a curse? It's been a while since you've really dived into the item list. I'm just trying to think about it and I can't think of a helm that does it. There's the helm that's like strengthen. You get strengthen every time you get muddle. There's the one that's... There's the pendant, which is immunity to poison and wound. There's the... Um, the whole Drake scale set. But I believe... Does something, does something in the Drake scale set... Does, oh, does Drake scale helm do it? Is it Drake scale helm? It was forced movement. Ah. Because there's the Drake scale sets all, all immunities, isn't it? Helm is muddle. Helm is muddle. Chest is what? Poison and wound? Something? And the legs is the force movement one. Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe a CS has such an item. That would be cool if there was. But I, I do think that... So one thing to like kind of consider a little bit with Crimson Scales is that... I mean, Nitz might correct me if I'm wrong here. But the... You know, all of these classes were kind of created, you know, mostly ind independently. Obviously, they were all playtested with e each other. But, you know, Crimson Scales is like a collection of the classes that work well together. And they've kind of curated the groups for ones that work together. But as far as I'm aware, they haven't taken like... So for example, if this was a Jaws of the Lion character, you can damn well be sure there would be an item that would do this. But because it's Crimson Scales and it's more of a collection and then the, um, you know, I don't feel like they've like curated it to that level. Does that make sense? Nitz might say I'm wrong on that, but that's my impression of it. Is that it's much more like regular gloomhaven where yeah there are a couple of cool interactions but you know not every character has one <clears throat> yeah so cs for better or worse wasn't designed with what it eventually became for example there may be a certain monster that you only see in a certain chain of scenarios because it started as like a 12 scenario project right? heavy greaves you are immune to all forced movement caused by enemies or scenario effects won't work yeah shame shame okay well i mean if there's no item that gives us immunity to immobilize apart from there's you know if you're playing with a sword bones <laughs> then maybe go ahead and have fun but otherwise i feel like supercharged gunpowder is the pick because you've got two two really good halves anyway you know, I know this isn't particularly great compared to some of our other ones at like level seven and six and seven and and back back that way, but it's still pretty pretty usable. It's not a bad attack, and it's reusable. And this is the wombo combo. <clears throat> you said this many times, but splash damage works with powerful buckshot. Well, I, I'm not sure what you mean by. Which splash damage? I'm getting confused by what you mean. What what splash damage works with it? Like, what's the other card? Oh, I see what you mean. So, oh, okay. So if an if if an enemy suffered damage from projectile splash damage. Powerful Buckshot could be used on them and you'd get the bonus. Okay, I see what you mean now. Sorry. Right, I've got you. Yeah, I'm on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. You don't necessarily have to target the target of the projectile. You could just target anything that's the, you know, incendiary thing that took damage from it. Yeah, that's, that's a good observation. Yeah, that does, that does make the card... Like, actually, that makes the card, like, a lot more flexible than something like the favorite, right? Which is always, like, I have to attack this one thing. Like, no, actually, like, so in theory, if, you know, something dies, you'd at least have something else to attack, right? If this guy died and you did the splash damage to others, you'd at least have something more to attack, which is cool. You, it wouldn't be all wasted. 
Makes the level 9 combo easier. Yeah, it does, actually. Quite a bit. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the thing that died, the target that took special damage can still get the bonus. Yeah, exactly. Which is nice, because it means that... Yeah, one, one of the downsides of playing, like, repeat shot and stuff like that is that sometimes the enemy is already kind of dead and you end up not getting, like, the bonuses or whatever. That makes powerful bug shot plus bomb items really strong as well. Yeah. Yeah, this character definitely wants bombs. Hand slot items, bombs. Head slot item... I would say like a Hawk Helm on something like this, but to be honest, I don't feel like that's really needed. I mean, it would give you a little bit more flexibility, maybe, but you'd, you'd probably just want goggles. And then chest, I would take an armor item just because you got the perk, so it kind of makes sense. Give everybody else the opportunity to have, have that. I mean, the only other thing to maybe consider would be one of the robes that adds extra damage if you want to get really spicy and go all in, but... That could be a thing. Um, footwear, I think you probably just want plus movement boots, but like those initiative boots, I think was maybe a good good try. Try them with initiative boots. Like, like how often do you need to get under 10 initiative? That does kind of bring into question initiative boots a little bit. But I'm... this character feels like they have good control over their initiative in general, so... I don't, I don't feel like that's too much of a concern. So probably just plus movement because you've already got jump on an ability um, at level one anyway. So you could just, you know, plus two movement boots onto that. You've got to move five jump. Um, small items. Power potions. Definitely. Uh, nine card class. So stamina potion probably should be your first, your first small item anyway just to give you that extra turn. Straight off the bat. Um, the powders. Lots of ranged attacks. Powders generally work quite well with them. And then I guess all of your usual broken stuff, right? If you were tanking, I think tanking, yeah, tanking is a bit different. Iron Helm, of course. Um, armor item. Then for your hand, your hand slot items, you'd probably be looking at shield items. I think, you, yeah, you'd want shield items. I really would like chain armor on this guy. That'd be the one I'd want. I'd want the Red Guard's chain armor from um, Jaws of Lion. That, that armor item has fast become my favorite armor item in the game. Like, it's so cheap and it's just so efficient. Because charges just go like that anyway. Like, you get, like, usual armor and you have, like, four charges on it. It's gone in a round. So just give me shield one for an entire round. Thank you very much just scales so well. Like, I don't think I want any other item. Dark Pendant, more bombs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess you could go for the full broken. Um... Yeah, you could do that. Like, Empowering Talisman too. I guess for hand slot items, you could go Piercing Bow if you really wanted to. Piercing Bow would be like quite a good cheap sideboard item for you if you wanted to... Like, if you went into a scenario with living spirits or something, maybe you'd consider doing that. Although you have a fair amount of, like, cards that have the word pierce on them or, you know, the rolling modifiers with pierce. Like, you know, you've got ways of getting it. The game comes with a whole bunch of new items too. So it's also going to be a wait and see. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be some, some spicy items that you can use for this guy too. Rings two with the tank, so you can stack shields to use with level five. Yeah, you'd probably want, um, well, yeah, you'd want all of the, for tanks in particular, you always want the refresh item stuff. So sun earring um, is like the best item you can get early on because you can just refresh. You know, usually you really want to refresh like boots, armor, and your, you know, your shield slots. So yeah, sun earring is usually the best kind of like early early item to get after something like, you know, stamina potion or healing potion, like whatever's available to begin with. But yeah. Anything that does that. Is it Sword Edge that has to retaliate along with the shield? It is. But I think it's only four charges. Four charges, Sword Edge? I think like plate mail is like five. 
The best best male is five. Sword Edge is like... No, Sword Edge might be three with Retaliate, actually. Let's see if four or three. Because then there's also the armor that is four. Well, honestly, chain armor. It's like, what, 30 gold? Shield one for the entire round? You're going early anyway because you're playing a shielding card. No brainer. Sword Edge is three, yeah. I thought it might be like, that sounds quite strong. Four charges with four lots of retaliate. That sounds a bit more balanced. Plus, it's, it's a high prosperity item though. so And it's expensive. Like most of the high, high armor is like, what, 75, 80 gold? 30 gold and chain armor. <laughs> it's the best. You'd have to see the tank build in action because there's not much to compare it to in base Gloomhaven. You can get huge shield retaliate turns, but how does that compare to just having a burn plus two shield every turn? Well, I think the yeah, the red guard gives you a really good kind of feel for that. Like this the the the, the tanking. The tankiness of this character feels very similar to that of the Red Guard. The only difference being that I think the Red Guard... The Red Guard wants to almost retaliate every single round. I don't think that's necessarily the case here. Like, I feel like this character can kind of mix in a few little things here and there. And that's true with the Red Guard, but... The Red Guard really needs those um, immobilizers and models and give... A disadvantage to enemies to really capitalize will you actually straight up have a ranged retaliate card on this character so you know that kind of makes things up quite a bit easier you probably would have to you wouldn't have to work as hard here as you did on the red guard maybe but i think they're fairly comparable in terms of style and effectiveness pretty similar but the thing with the Red Guard is the Red Guard can also just pull out a really good just like attack right off the gate, right? Can just go, you know, here's here's a strong attack this turn. And this character can't quite do that because most of their strong attacks are delayed a turn because they're all projectiles. So, I don't know. I guess that the Red Guard would feel maybe a little bit more flexible than this maybe you think this is less extreme than shield spikes but this might have stronger attacks on non-tanking turns no i would disagree with that because the red guard can do it immediately and there's value to that there's really good value to that yes this guy also has like oh, i could just drop this and then shield up on the next turn or whatever the red guard can i mean like flying sickle is an attack five range four like pull two create wind and he can play it immediately plus also he doesn't have to worry about playing shield and retaliate he just needs to play shield so he kind of saves in that respect too so i think there's similarities but i feel like the red guard is much more flexible in that respect right siflin Holy cow, 10 gifted subs, dude. That is crazy. Thank you so, so much. That is incredibly kind, dude. I really, really appreciate it. Welcome all new people. Rava, Divergent World Lines, Whisper, Igiloth, Val, Pillow of Might, The Geeky Maker, QQQ, Capri Sun D, Wild Starter. Welcome, guys. Nice. Make sure to thank... Um, Syphilin in the chat. That's incredibly kind. Pog frogs, pog toads, and guards in chat. Dude, that's that's insane. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Welcome all to the adventuring party. I hope you're all doing great. And Syphilin again. Thank you so much, man. That's that's incredibly kind. It's incredible. Thank you. What a what an amazing, what an amazing end to this uh to this guide to this this uh stream. Appreciate it, man. You can play a meteoric blast. That will lower delay. Does a buttload of damage. Yeah, that's true. But if things like move around, it's not consistent. Like, Red guard is just reliable. He's old, reliable Red guard. He doesn't need an enemy to be in the right place. You know, he just runs at them, <laughs> flying sickles them. They're dead. And plus, he's also got a lot of like plus one damage that he does. Right? 
He's got a lot of pure damage that he does through his bottom abilities and some of the other cards that he can take. Like, he can just move three and do two damage to all adjacent enemies at high levels. Like, you know, he's got... I think he's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve. Like, he's a very, very flexible character that only requires you to burn one card, which is shield spikes, and then you can kind of just play around that for the rest of the scenario. And as long as you're kind of happy to do that and you kind of time everything right i think he's very good so yeah i think um definite similarities there so if we like to summarize to summarize this character i think this is i think this is a pretty excellent character like i think it's it's very well designed the mechanic is different enough from what has kind of come before but it's fairly simple to understand which is to me like the sweet spot when you're trying to make a gloomhaven character like you want to have it so that the mechanic is simple enough that you can kind of teach it to somebody or they can learn that mechanic in you know 30 seconds read this, you know you literally just read the board with this guy and you're like you might have a few little questions but you'll be like Okay, I think I get it. All right, then you start looking at the cards. You go, okay. Like the cards kind of re... Like they reaffirm the mechanic at the start of your next turn. Do this, right? There's the target. They kind of... They confirm that mechanic to you very quickly. The the damage that it does, the numbers of everything like add up. Like it, it feels like a... It feels like a fairly powerful character, but you have to work for it. But also, it's not so powerful that it's maybe going to take over the game in some way that, like, some other very powerful characters sometimes do. Feels like it would be, you know, a good role player. You know, you're looking for a damage dealer. You're looking for a tank. You can fill those roles and, you know, be a good team player. Um... I think the only, I guess the only, I guess my only criticism of it would be that, you know, as you kind of go on, the class doesn't really like reveal many more kind of like layers to it. Like you get a few extra little things that kind of, you know, improve your projectiles, like slightly better projectiles and a few other little tricks that you kind of get. Um, and then I guess, I guess really where the, where it almost kind of tops out for me is Buckshot. Like once you get Buckshot, I felt like at that point in time, you're like, yeah, I'm set now, right? Where's that? So what was that? Like level... Level four. And and to be fair, level four is usually like... Level four, level five is like the power... Like that's the hump. Most characters like get something really good at four and five. Um, that's the... I can't remember the watershed moment. I can't remember what, what people are calling it nowadays. But the essentially these levels are just really where... Where like the character kind of grows a lot like the power level kind of just spikes and you get something really cool that like just opens it up and um powerful box shot of four was that and um you know i think sharp and focus you know well level five this is definitely the the kind of the, the really good tanking cards so you get that at five and i feel like powerful box shot is the level four like for the the attacking build so yeah, I guess my only minor criticism would be that it doesn't really build out on much. Um, but I think that's fine. You know, it picks it picks a lane and it sticks it really well. And it provides a really good quality class that's got two, two viable but different and interesting builds. So transformative is the word I'm looking for. Thank you. There you go. You do think with the tank theme, it's given a lot of safe slash boring bots with low initiative, which you don't want to hold against it, but it's still a bit air. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that's fair. That's fair criticism. I, she, tanking is always really difficult to get, to make it interesting because tanking is shield and retaliate. That's kind of like your two, your two lots. And then occasionally you get like, you know, ignore damage effects or something like that. Like, I guess that would be like, maybe you group that in as well. There's not... There's not like a huge amount of space, I guess, within that kind of play style 
And I think that maybe that's why I like the red guard, because it kind of changed that play style up a little bit enough that it kind of made it a bit more interesting. But if you've got like the sun on one end, like being the super hard, like I am a tank, um, she still still attacks. But let's say that you know she's like one end of the spectrum of like super hard tank, and then maybe like you've got someone like red guard maybe towards the other end. Like I feel like they're fairly far apart because like she just focuses on being a hench shielded person all the time just doesn't take any damage whereas red guard's more like hey i want to take damage i want to retaliate you know like it's kind of like but they're both kind of within the same field it's kind of awkward and then you've got like a lot of characters that kind of fit somewhere in the middle like you kind of got three spears down the sun end and then you got kind of like maybe Maybe like you got lightning bolt weird retaliate build somewhere towards that end, right? Near the red guard, I don't know. And this guy's probably like more towards the red guard end. Or maybe somewhere in the middle, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. But yeah, I feel like making a really, really good unique tank is really hard. Because there's only so many abilities that really achieve that result in the game. So... It was inevitably, it, it usually means low initiatives and the word shield. And yeah, it's hard to change that. It's like Doomstalker somewhat. Stronger attacks as it levels. More shields and retaliates as, as it levels. Tanking is fun though. Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of fun to be had. People who enjoy playing tanks will definitely be able to play a fun tank in this character. Like, you will find a lot of fun in this character. Being able to play as a tank. So... Yeah, uh, so aside from like some minor criticism to do with the fact like the character doesn't really evolve too much. It kind of just does what it does and just kind of gets a bit better, gets a few more tools, gets some like incremental improvements. Um, but the cards are flashy and fun, which helps. You know, like getting, um, you know, when you do get Meteoric Blast, you know, this is suddenly like, wow, I've, you know, it feels really powerful. It's, it's a flashy ability, feels good. Does a bunch of damage. You know, when you play this, it's going to feel so good. Like, everybody around the table is going to be like, yeah, that happened, you know? That kind of ability, which is always good. The, the lack of any kind of element generation I thought was kind of interesting. Like, sorry, not generation, consumption. There's plenty of generation. Um, consumption I thought was kind of interesting. Would have maybe been cool to have seen a few little abilities that consume an element in some way to like power up the attack or something. But I mean, they wanted to keep the character very focused and they've achieved that. You know, anything that they would add now would maybe just be, you know, unnecessary fluff. And, uh, you know, they've they've created a really good focused character that's clearly been, you know, play tested and clearly been refined down to like exactly what they wanted to be which is great rating out of a 10 um yeah probably got like a 7.5 like if i'm i'm basically like ranking so like my favorites so far have been the ruin more and the artificer so i would probably rank this just a little bit below those um I'd probably prefer to play this over the Luminary, though. I don't know, actually. They're pretty close. I'd say they're probably pretty close, actually. Like, the Luminary's got some really fun things going on. It might be a little bit more, like, tickle my brain a little bit more. But, like, if I wanted to just play a really good damage dealer, then this is a really good character to have list. Like, I would, I would absolutely... Like, if I was playing four-player... I would happily have this in my party. Like, I would possibly even pick this. Like, I would pick kind of like two characters that are maybe a bit more involved. And then this would be a really good option as like a kind of a backup um, damage dealer. Because I know I wouldn't have to like work really, really hard to get good value out of this character. You know, it's, but if I've got like four characters that require really intricate or difficult play, that can sometimes be a bit hard. So yeah, like if I was trying to like, play a couple of characters really really well and i was just looking for a good role player like for either a tank or a damage dealer yeah 
Gives nice fire for your Luminary. You're trying to figure out how to play Luminary and get a rhythm down for turns. Mm -hmm. And this character, it's all about the rhythm, baby. Mm. That might be good for Crimson Scales. Some that look cool, some that look good and easily powerful. Yeah, it's... One one thing that you, you kind of have to be a bit wary of is that as, as we have these more and more complicated characters kind of like come out, you know, these new things, because naturally the game is going to get more complicated because, you know, the basic things have been achieved. So now it's always going to be, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more each time. And, you know, when especially like if you play solo, it's, sometimes it's really nice to just have a character that you don't have to think too hard, but really helps you just win just because they have good numbers. They're kind of quite easy to play. They level up nicely. You know, they fit a good role. That's quite nice to just have that kind of character you don't have to think about. Yeah, you know, for me in Deadly, that's the hatchet. You know? And this could fit that hatchet kind of wrong. It's a character that I really don't have to worry about what they're doing on their turn. Because they're moving and they're attacking. And if they don't have their favorite, they're trying to pick up their favorite. <laughs> you know, it's like feels like a very nice easy turns which it might mean that i don't get the most out of that character like somebody solely playing the hatchet might be like okay well i can do this i can do this i can do this but i know that i don't necessarily need that kind of performance out of the character i just need to do my job solidly right <clears throat> you just realize this class doesn't consume any elements just makes a few yeah like no no consumption and i do feel like Maybe the odd little bit here or there would have been fine. Just to kind of like empower an attack or, you know, because like, you know, you're driving a big tank around, like consuming fire. You know, you could have like a, you know, fuel, like tank fuel type card or something that could have been like, like, or like earth, right? Because earth could be like coal. You could interpret earth to be like coal. So you could have, you could have had like some kind of ability that was like, you know, consuming it to kind of add power to the tank in some way. I don't know. Just, it, you know, there, there's, like, this character has a lot of potential for theme. And I feel like the theme basically just extended to, I fire a big gun, like, big gun goes bang. And, <laughs> or, hey, teammate, do you want to fire the big gun? Sure. Teammate fires a big gun, go bang, you know? <laughs> And then I guess the grappling hook stuff is kind of another layer to it, to be fair. But, you know. <laughs> this might be a better hatchet because you can plan a bit and have build flexibility. Yeah, maybe. I mean, the biggest downfall to the hatchet is he has one build. Like, there's nothing else to it. Very, very by the numbers character. That hatch actually has one of the best gameplay loops. It is very satisfying to kill something, pick up the favorite, use it again, pick it up. Like, it feels good, but it's not like... I don't... I, I feel like, you know, strategically, it doesn't challenge you. Unless, unless you go hard on, like, some of the other cards. Like, I do feel like there's a couple of cards that you can throw in to make it a bit spicier. Like Overwatch, for example, is a card that I haven't played much with, but a lot of people on my guide were like, oh man, you got to try Overwatch. You can do this cool stuff with it. And I was like, hmm, yeah, you can do cool stuff with it. But I've just never really done it because I've always just been by the numbers, you know? Never never tried to do that kind of like fun Overwatch turn. <clears throat> me bombard, me go bang. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's fine. But I just, I felt like there was maybe... A little bit more flavor that could have been put in. And unlike, um, like, so this character only has, like, one mechanic. And a, a, a few of the others had, like, two, right? So this, it really only had one mechanic that was new. Like, I guess you could say the grappling hook stuff is kind of new. Because it's a new, it's kind of a new ability. But it's using existing words, so it was very easy to just like word it in. Like you didn't need you didn't need to write anything about how it operates here because it's very obvious. It says it on the card. So I guess that's kind of like its second mechanic. You'd like to see more getting, granting allies, more attacks when adjacent. That felt like it could have been explored more. 
Not if they're giving up their turn, though. <laughs> that will go down in infamy as a card. In okay. I maybe I'll have to mark it that point. Like, I don't think that card should exist. That's my personal opinion. Final thoughts. Where is it? Where is it? Where are you? Final thoughts. This card should never have been printed. <laughs> or never should have been designed. Personal opinion. Everything else about the character was great. Apart from this card. Which sucks. And I hate it. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's a, you don't have to play it. It's an X card. It's easy enough to not play, you know? Some people might want to play it. People won't. I just don't like the... Uh, I don't like the implications of it. What if your ally is stunned? Value? Yes. Well, yes, there are opportunities, of course. You did that? Let's see. Don't try and make me... Make, don't try and change my opinion on this. <laughs> I just yes there are situations where this could be quite good but it also just means that your friend isn't playing the game <laughs> why no nuke at level 9 causing 10 damage to yourself and all adjacent create light and fire that could be an interesting one I do think that there's a room for a, a card like that. Because um, obviously the Berserker has Final Fight, which has always a bit, a bit, been a bit of a meme. But I actually quite like the implication of a card like that. You know, when played at the right time in the right situation, you could essentially win the scenario for your team. Like self-destruct button on the tank. Kind of interesting idea. Like, I'm going to die anyway, guys. I'm blowing up. <laughs> Do it, go and take it as many of them out as, with me as I can, you know? Kind of like a cool idea. The class is missing a fireball, the cannons card attack, all within range two or three of you. Yeah, that could have been a good level nine. What you could have done is you could have had... Um, so you could have had a pattern like this, except this was like you. And then maybe it was like every... like a complete circle around you. Because, like, that pattern's never really going to come up in the game, like, in a practical way. But it'd be, like, fun. Like, it's not like you can be like, oh, yes, this is going to be really good. I guess the Firewall, the Cannons card was the... In that respect, was that... um That projectile that did this? No. What was that projectile that did that? There was a projectile that kind of did that. This one. But it's a barrage rather than like a all of the cannons at once, I guess. <clears throat> the flames of hell await this card. Yeah, that gifted one. Not a fan. So apart from that, all good. This was a good one. So thanks everybody for uh, voting in the Discord and picking this one. This was a good one to review. It's a good one to kind of like get back into the swing of doing these reviews too because it wasn't too like it wasn't too difficult and i think we had like lots of like easy comparisons to other other characters and other mechanics and how things work like this felt like quite a good one to be able to to kind of understand the value without playing as much like it's it's always really difficult to to say like oh this is going to be good this is going to be bad until you get into a scenario and you try and practically use it um, and it's some, this one could be a bit awkward because of the whole delayed damage. Like, like one kind of turn you have to wait for your projectiles. But I feel like once you get into the swing of the projectiles and you kind of get a good little tempo going, you know, you're reliably going to be doing like hopefully a projectile attack or a regular attack like every sort of turn. You know, you're going to have an attack hopefully every turn or, or most turns. So I think that's that's fine. You just need to kind of forego the first turn to kind of get things going a little bit so there we have the quartal bombard a very interesting class definitely i really like the projectile mechanic i think it's a really smart kind of uh kind of working on like uh this kind of traditional mechanics of the game that kind of delayed damage is really interesting actually 
does mean that there's going to be some kind of weird interaction sometimes with like your allies who are kind of attacking stuff and maybe they kill something before your thing gets to go off but i like that it kind of just sits there and you kind of you're tempted to sort of get enemies to come to you it's a little bit of a different play style quite often you know the gloomhaven encourages you to run towards enemies to kind of kill them or, or stun them you know or, or control them up in some way and be quite aggressive whereas this is a character who's a little bit more like let the enemies come to me you know i'm going to put down some defensive uh kind of these um these projectiles and i'm going to sit here and i'm going to wait for them to come to me and trigger these projectiles off hopefully they're going to be there at the beginning of my next turn and that's kind of like a really cool interesting mechanic and really thematic to how uh, this kind of character looks and the kind of way that they're going after it i think it's very very clever so yeah really kind of a very very clever class this one big home run in my opinion like they've really managed to nail the theme they've nailed a very engaging character you know it doesn't feel like it's going to be massively too powerful maybe powerful in some respects but i feel like having power but having to work for it is always a good balance to have when you're looking at classes so yeah I, it's a thumbs up from me and i'll be looking forward to trying this one when my physical copy arrives again a big thank you to the patreon supporters and the people who sub over on twitch i really appreciate and mike kira for the legendary support on patreon that is awesome of you dude thank you so much if you would like to catch me live doing one of these come over to twitch.tv slash manage request on wednesdays for the crimson scale streams but i also stream and talk gloomhaven on mondays and sundays as well okay all that's left for me to say is thank you again so much for watching i will catch you in the next video bye I think so. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Scout oh, the That's the best thing from Jeff. That's the blessing so, from uh, uh, Isaac. At this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh -huh. for allies in the digital version?